Birdman hands. That's so silly. Let's get into it. Welcome, D. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's Chilling. another Saturday. It is. Are you going outside after this? Uh -oh. I don't know. It's pretty hot out there. I'll hit my, my volume up on my tablet. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little hot out there. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I get, I'm going to grace people with my presence today. Maybe a little later on. Just what I'm saying, later on. Maybe a little later on. Some things I, I need to do around the house first. But um, it's a beautiful day. It is oh, yeah, the car need to get washed on. It does. You need to call your main man. Um, I can <laughs> see what I can do. Huh? That's yes, you funny. <laughs> <laughs> you so funny and petty. Your main man. Your main, your main man is the car wash man. Yeah, it's so that is that's your, that is your buddy. Like if anybody can get him to work after hours or make some type of arrangement, that would be him. But the rides are dusty AF and um they need some attention. I you, don't, know, I, you know the you know you can do it. I, I knew that was coming to me. <laughs> you know, I'm still convalescent, so I'm just taking my and, time. And you and you and he have to stand to do it. You can just sit down. But 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 how? I mean, I need to get rolls the back top of the hood, hood, and I got to get the holes and the holes. Oh, that yeah, that holes ain't there. nothing. That yeah. holes ain't nothing. All you need yeah. to do is yeah. make sure you're in the shade. It's five thousand degrees outside. Yeah, you don't wash don't it right no, now. Don't have no coverage. Like you don't wash it right now. You wash it about six o'clock. You can only do one. Raining, car, man. It might be raining. You need to check that. But I thought about it. I just want you to know. I thought about. It. I was like, I can do this. But then I was like, the brushes are there. You can do the little brushes. And on, not only not only that, you still have it's the um, foam. On there, all you do is put the foam on there, and then get the first layer of dirt off, and then so you go it's, back. It's, yeah, I and mean, when I tell you it's so hot, like even at six o'clock when I went out yesterday at six o'clock, the sun was still beaming. So if I put any water on there, it just beat on up. Oh, so yeah, so that means we need to get the filtration system put in, so it can be spotless. Yeah, we don't have that capacity yet. It's okay. You don't need to. You just got to work quicker. I'm convalescing. <laughs> that's going to be your story for the rest of the year? Probably. I'm probably, that's probably going to be my story because even though I'm not physically, you don't see anything that doesn't mean, you know, when it comes you to You weren't convalescing when you was over there hacking down trees on that lot. <laughs> I wasn't hacking down trees. I had a pruner. I had the little pruner. And I had a chainsaw. So the yeah, chainsaw one. did the work. All yeah. I did was take the chainsaw. It's still vibrating it. though. And I paid for it the next day. I was I was laid out. But the lot looks beautiful. I rode by and I was like, oh, beautiful. You can see around. It's gorgeous. But a pruner and a chainsaw. I really didn't do the work. The tools did the work for me. And a blower, but I paid for it the next day. Well, let's say I'm gonna say this, it's gonna be controversial. You was doing a man's job. There you go on your BS. <laughs> don't don't come into this space with your shenanigans this morning. It's afternoon. Don't do your shenanigans. You can say I was doing advanced gardening. Like, don't come with your shenanigans this morning. I this afternoon. I, I can't. I, I, I cannot. You and can't I be did. in your feminine energy if you out there. Yeah, I have pruners. You was not pruners. in your feminine energy over there with a chainsaw. That is not it's feminine. Cool. It's battery power. It's battery power chainsaw. You weren't living in your femininity. <laughs> you gonna make me curse on the show. You gonna make me curse. On this show, I told you stop going to bed, listening to that madness, and bringing me your shenanigans. I cannot do it. You are the first. You, you, you did you break a nail? No. 
Okay, you were you weren't living I, in I, your... No, I didn't break it down. I oh, didn't. Okay. Know, matter of fact, I went over there with. Did I go over there with new nails? And I did my nails. Light work, light work. But um, you know, there you were a couple it. of men that came by, and I did offer them, you know the chance to you know be involved with the community and cut some of these trees and prune some of these hedges but i don't think nah, it ain't no wild it ain't no it ain't, no, it ain't no wildlife on that lot called the Ele- Evelyn. It's oh, it's a wildlife on there it's a it's wild the, it was a wildlife on there it's the trees that it's, it's <laughs> the trees it's, it's it's a tree it's a mango tree it's a mango tree and a palm tree they had combined and made love to each other and, and, it's, each and other. it was some crickets on there. I think it's that season. It's probably, you know, we try to keep it a lot of that stuff cut back so it won't be like woodland creatures, but the locals can be considered woodland creatures because some of them is a woodland creatures. You don't, um, have, you, don't, you don't have snake away? They have some snake away stuff. It's stink. But it's like granules, and you have the bag, and you shake it all the way around where you don't want the um the snakes to be. What's so, the um? What was the other stuff I got that's in the garage? The with the with the peppermint. That's for spiders. For yeah, for spiders, you want to use that the too. Snakes, the snakes, the snake stuff stink. Yeah, the snake away stinks. Um, the peppermint stuff is like for like. Cause I had a, I had a, um, I had a, what was it called? What was it called? A brown recluse. A brown recluse that got into my car, and so I was like, I was like, oh no, this ain't gonna work. So I had, I closed all the, all the vents, stuck the car in the sun, and had the peppermint spray, which is not harmful to humans. And I put that in in the car, and I left it in. I left, anyway. yeah, I left it. I left it in there. Left them in there probably like maybe two or three days. And but you know what? I think everything is the cycle of life. Like the snakes need to eat whatever other little creatures that's creeping and crawling around. You know, and the spiders do the their job. Too. You know, everybody do their job. Long as it's night, night. You know, five all in them roaming around and all that other stuff. Now we do have like a what is it a a ki- not a coyote but was it is it a coyote. a coyote in the neighborhood? We may have a couple of cats or something like that, but um, they don't come over here too much. Yeah, that that brown recluse. It was a I think it was a I think it was two or three of them that were. Um, and then I did some reading, so it might have been a brown. It it could have it could have been mistaken for a brown recluse. No, it was a brown recluse. He was chunky. He was chunky and moving quick. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no, sir, not today. So um, let me see. All right, I'm gonna do the intro, D. And then, you gonna do the intro? Mm-hmm. And then you I'll can you um, your intro. Do and go from there. All right. If you don't know who you are, I'm Tam. This D. We're Women in Linux. You can find us on social media throughout social media at Women in Linux. Um, we are on Clubhouse. We are on TikTok. Of course, we are on YouTube. You can find us um, on Meetup.com. If you go over to Meetup.com/slash Women in Linux. I feel like I get this all the time and people still don't get it, but I do it anyway. Uh, you can find us on meetup.com slash women in Linux, where we always try to keep up, up with events and so forth and so on. We are also on LinkedIn as well, too. I also need to get need to do a live just on LinkedIn. I need to do that. Um, I have not done that, but I need to do that. Um, in terms of um where else you can find us well you can find us and connect with us after you get done watching the show is you can hit connect on our site and it's going to drop you into here where you put your email address in and it's going to connect you with slack in our slack group uh we have uh more than i think we got 88 channels of just random stuff i'm just playing but we got 88 channels of uh, creating uh, wealth to security to jobs to hey how do you get into tech or 
hey, uh, these scholarships are coming up. These conferences are coming up. Uh, hey, this job is paying this. Hey, this job is paying that. And also, last but not least, how they invest as well, too. So we have we talk about everything, right? Everything we talk about, we have a channel for. Yeah, everything. Everything. Like, And if you don't, if you only go to Slack and see six channels, go hit the channel browser and it'll bring up a whole menu of uh, channels and you can join the channels and um, just dig in. Our Slack goes back a long time, so it is chock full of resources. Right. And last but not least, if you would like to donate and you don't want to donate money, you can donate with your time. What does that look like? That could be coming up on stage and presenting something here. You can present something at the meetup. We can make a special day where you do a donation. Well, when I say a donation, where you do a presentation. Uh, you can recommend this channel to someone. You can spread the word. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and the notification button. And as well, if you don't feel like you can do any of those things, if you feel like your hand is broken to share the content and so forth, just click on donate and uh, just share your 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 tithes and offerings with us. <laughs> Not the tithes and offering. It's tithes and offering. The doors of the church is open. Some And our super chat feature is working again. So if you want to be so inclined to hit that super chat, we are a nonprofit. So 100% of the proceeds goes back to who? That would be you. So listen, D, I, this is what I was thinking. I was thinking. Wait, wait, before you think something, Calendly. Our one oh one. Yes, our one on one sessions are the calendar is open. We'll be adding another month, but we still have time up on the board. So if you need some um some one on one when it comes to your resume, your career, um what other stuff? We get some other stuff that we have on there. uh career resume, resume, resume career, career interview. Yeah, and I, I've gotten people that want to help start their business as well too. And connecting glenn what's up i um we got to get back together we got to get back on our sessions um as well too um and it's also about for me it's also about not just having you come and we just doing this one-on-one -on -one and we uh, motivational speaking i'm 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 not a motivational speaker per se i'm more like um uh the button was to do okay, it was easy to put toward talking to us. yeah and uh the i'm more of a uh hey what can i do to assist you with your plan and your dreams and your goals and your aspiration again i i don't like the fact that we want to be lone wolves on a lot of things i, I understand you got to study and read things for yourself to understand but I'm also not a fan of being a lone wolf on, on certain things. So we try not to do that. We try to get you involved with people that I know, whether I introduce you to Eric or whether you go on Eric's podcast and say you came from uh, from Women in Linux or what have you, however, however you can get in to, to make it happen. Just don't forget to bring people along with you as well, too. You don't have to bring me along with you. You can bring other people that spread the love spread the wealth is, is right. and then we give you actionable steps i mean a, a lot of times people come in because they don't know where to start and it's very overwhelming when you start a new journey and you have all this information that you're trying to start out sort through and like tam say it's hard to do it alone you can look at other people and know their path but sometimes when we look inward we're like oh my goodness where do we have to start? And sometimes you just need a little guidance on what that looks like in sizable chunks. Because I know, you know, this is women in Linux. So, you know, women, we overthink a lot of things and uh, we, you know, get all this education and certifications and all this stuff and still don't know where to start. And, you know, gentlemen, it's the same way. You know, what do we do with the skills that we already have? How can we build on top of that and make a way for ourselves what why don't you think what you already have is enough and if you have what do you have can you move forward with that so that's why we're here so one-on-one -on -one sessions definitely help sort through all the melee in your brain yep and then last but not least um 
uh, just being able to chat in Slack and have a community where you can bounce ideas. Um, I try to respond to everything. If I catch it, if I don't catch it, I apologize. But you know, I try to make sure I get get you an at least an answer, at least some some clarity on your question and so forth. Right. So that's the, what the goal is. The goal is to build a community. The goal is to build a a, a community of people at least at a minimum of two hundred thousand and on your way to millionaires. Hopefully, on your way to a hundred million. As I was told, that was where I needed to be. So, you know, hey, it is what it is, right? All right, so I'm going to turn this over to D. Oh, oh, I did have one thing. IT Pro TV? Yeah, I, well. <laughs> Do you have IT Pro TV? Okay, so yeah, if you want to do some training, IPProTV.com and then put in the actual um, code for uh, Women in Linux to get 30% off. I use IT Pro TV for uh for lessons, but here's another thing that IT Pro TV actually serves. A lot of you go out and you get these certifications and you have to have continual education credits. So at least when you go through the classes here, you get certificate just like you would on the other platforms as well too. But you can use that as towards your continual education credits because you do have to have continual education credits uh, as you go through, especially if you get like the, the Security Plus or anything come to you wise, you have to have uh, CEUs is what it's called, it, continual education units. Uh, but you have to have those. All right. Now I forgot what I was going to say, Dubla. <laughs> Did you call me Dubla? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you have so many things. I did. What did you have to? What did you have to sneak right in there before our introduction? Mm, I forgot now. It'll come How back. Can you forget? It was important too, but it'll come back to me. I know we we need we needed to come back because I, I our our guest. It looks like that the, our guest went away for a brief moment. So hopefully our guest can hear us. Oh, and, it's, and, it's all it's all good. You know, I have talking points. All right. So one of the things that. Uh oh. Uh -oh. One, one of the things that I, I did um, do some some research on um, while you know in my in my in my in my time yesterday was did you have yeah I didn't have a lot. Well, I did reach out to a wealth management company. That's why I talked about it earlier, and it was interesting. Thank you, blind guy, for the super chat too. By the way. Um, for the super chat. Um, see, I did not know that I still need to take CEU. Yep, you do need to get those CEUs. Yes. Um, what what I what I discovered was uh, there's different you know levels to you know the wealth managers and so forth. And so you know I'm not telling anyone to do this. This is financial advice not financial advice but what i'm what i am saying is go look at what your options are get out there and find out who can do what and what can they do and what do they do just to have some knowledge just i mean you got to interview them it's got to be a working relationship and I'm, I'm and i'm only saying that because um you may get into something that you don't you 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 know investing in something you don't want to manage it it could be it may be too much. So finding the, the right person with some you know credibility and not gonna steal all your money. You see, you've been seeing all these crypto places getting uh exchanges getting their money snatched and so forth. So, you know, be careful on that. Uh I think Anthony is frozen, D Block. I see him looking frozen as well. <laughs> Oh. Okay, there he is. Let's go. All right, let's get him while while we can. Let's get him before he disappears. Yeah. Okay, be so, you do your thing. Okay, so brief introduction. The next person that our guest for today, um, we go back from the nine nines and the two thousands. Um, this guy uh, is in. Well, he is the go to person when it comes to building your sales channel when when it comes to business development what i do know across any industry he can go get it he is the person that companies go to when they are trying to build their pipelines so but now he is in the solar energy sector 
And he has so many gems to drop to us today because, you know, what we talk about, we talk about tech in all things. So coming to the stage, we're bringing up Anthony Gardner from Option B Energy. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We see you and we don't see you. He is frozen again. (laughs) There you go. Oh, your light is behind you, Anthony. (laughs) Houston, we got a problem. (laughs) Your light is behind you. And you breaking up, too. What's going on in Houston right now? What is going on in Houston? On my uh, laptop. I don't... It's it's a conspiracy. So what I'd like to do is reset my router. Okay. Okay. That's all good. That's Go all. Ahead. We got we it. Got it. <laughs> we got you. All right. <laughs> well, Anthony's going to come back after he restarts his router because... Um, Struggle stream. I'm surprised you didn't immediately drop him because you. Know, I know you know, I, because I wanted to hear streaming. if his audio was going to come through for us. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to immediately drop him. But you know, I will drop the people. <laughs> All right. So cool. Yeah. So let me let me pull. I did. I did have notes. You know, from other shows that we've done that we didn't get through. So let me go to my notes right now, and go from there. And um, let me see. Let's see, it was episode sixty last week, but let me go to fifty nine because there was some stuff in episode fifty nine that I didn't I didn't get a chance to talk about. Oh yeah. Let's see, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so I posted in Slack too. Um, the there was a a young lady that was going to come on today. Um, She, I don't know if she's still coming or not, but anyway, she is a recruiter for AWS, for Amazon. And in this, I posted a job this week that they were looking for. um, Let me see, where did I add it? They're looking for people who got um, maybe graduated from college and don't have any experience or they got one year of, of looking or they maybe they got one year of experience i'm trying to see what i posted that job at um uh, in here and she is she was going to come on today to talk about uh that job and what they're looking for and i and from me talking to her it was more or less about um it was more or less about how to interview, how to get started, things that you can do, and so forth. Well, I can give you a, some quick pointers on AWS or Amazon's interview process um, real quick. And then hopefully she'll be able to join us. I sent her the link last night. and She might be in the chat as well, too. I told her to hit us up about 3 o'clock, so it's, it's 3.09 now, and so I have her. All right, so the star method for AWS, right? That's what they usually send over as their package in order to, um, in order in order to do the interview, right? And this has been talked about on the internet as well, too, right? So let's go blow this up. So, all right, so you're in a, in a job interview, and and they talk about this this star method, right? So a lot of a lot of interviews that you're t- that you'll get uh, are 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 looking at hey, how can I communicate uh, a, a failure to a customer? What does it look like uh, in an email? Right, they may send you like this email that you have to follow in order to uh, communicate this to a customer. So they they're looking at your communication skills. An- another situation um, where you may get and it's sometimes in a take home or even in an interview, they may ask you, hey, this customer is having problems with uh, this particular application. Um, we've looked, they've reviewed the logs. They have went through all the necessary steps. They still don't see the issue. Then they'll say, hey, 
what what does it look like in order to uh, help resolve this for the customer? What steps would you take? And how would you explain that to that customer on the steps that you've taken and then the results from those steps? So those are things that you that you'll look that you'll see as well too. Yeah, I saw that the article about 200k as an interim on, on Wall Street. Yep, I saw that. All right, so when we start talking about the star method, this is what Amazon uses, right? So let's get into more what it is. So it's situation, and D, if you can bring it back up, it'll be situation, task, action, result. So let me let me put this put it in this way: the notes that you take when I'm when I'm telling you to take notes on 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 how to on how to on how to take notes from your day to day, right? And because I tell you that's your daily journal, keep a daily journal because that's going to help you with um, getting um, one, what your yearly review is, like what did you do for the year? And it's also going to help you on like, hey, um, these are the things that I did. So it helps you with uh, quantifying ideas and thoughts on your resume and it also helps you in the interview process. So if you, if, excuse me, if you're practices, practicing writing this in your daily journal, it translates into uh, one for your resume and also translate into what you can talk about um, inside the interview. So they, they often, they tell you situation, task, action, result. The situation is set the scene and give the necessary details of your example. The task is describe what your responsibility was in that situation. Action, explain actually what steps you took to address it and result. Share what outcomes your actions achieved. By using these four components to shape in your, I guess your antidote, uh, it's much easier to share a focused answer. Providing providing the interviewer, interviewer uh, basically gave you a, digest a digestible narrative. Uh, they can follow along, but they can also, but also determine uh, based on the answer how well the candidate might fit for the job. That's true and that's false, right? And here's where it's true and false. True, they can kind of determine, but it's also on the interviewer to kind of dig a little more if they if they need more information, and it's also on you to say, um, that was the scenario. I can give more details if you would like for me to give more details. What do you what what more do you think you would like to know? Right. So be engaging on on the answer, be engaging on your response and so forth, right? So answering interview questions using STAR. Knowing the acronyms. Knowing what the acronym stands for is only the first step. You need to know how to use it. Follow the step-by-step -step process to give the best star answers. Find a suitable example. So when they say find a suitable example, they're saying, hey, go back into your previous jobs or experiences and say, hey, these are be good examples where I show my leadership ability. Here's a good example where I show my troubleshooting ab ability. Here's a, an example of where I showed how I communicated to a customer. Here's an example how, where I showed how a design should, should flow um, for our internal customer or you're communicating that to a team. Here's how, here's how I showed something that works for working with um, our, our vendors or meeting our compliance, right? So these are just things that you have to think about, but you want to give different examples, probably in probably about four or five of those situations that I just mentioned, right? So the STAR method won't be helpful to you if you use it to structure an answer using a totally in, in irrelevant, I guess, example, I would say. That's why a crucial starting point is to find an appropriate scenario from your professional history that you can expand on. There's no way for you to know ahead of time what the interviewer will ask, but you can kind of get an idea if you, the person who's being interviewed, ask questions. When I say ask questions, ask questions to the recruiter. And you normally, 
uh, Amazon recruiters, Microsoft recruiters are very clear about scenarios and what potentially that could be asked of you, right? So they're pretty clear on that, right? So, but brainstorm, I, I would suggest using a mind map or some type of place where you could drop your information down and go from there, right? All right, so brainstorm a few examples uh, of a particular success in your previous job and, and think through it. And then um, it says, if you're struggling during the interview to come up with an example that fits, don't be afraid to ask for a minute, right? Yeah, don't be afraid to ask for a minute and don't be afraid to take notes. Uh, lay out the situation. Again, you, to me, in an interview, you're storytelling, not not telling lies, but you're storytelling. Well, if you want to say storytelling, uh, we can think Jay-Z, Tupac, Biggie, Nas, or even if we want to look at um, Queen Latifah or any anybody that, that, that you recognize that paints a picture to you when they're telling you, hey, here's the situation, here's, 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 Here's the situation. Here's potential solutions. Here's what we should do. And here's how I should, here's how, here's what I did to get through that. Right. All right. So again, your goal is to paint a picture of the situation. Right. So we're going to keep that in mind. Your response uh, says in my previous digital marketing role, my company made the decision to focus primarily on email marketing and was looking to increase their list of email subscribers pretty aggressively, right? It's just giving you an example. It says, tell me about a time when you achieved a goal that you initially thought that was out of reach, right? And so here, this is where you get to maybe highlight some numbers. You get to highlight your role in it, how you communicated and so forth. Uh, Maximilian says, I remember Amazon was, was big on this, even for engineering interviews. Their recruiter, recruiter advised me to practice the star merit. Never forget behavioral questions are just as important as the tech ones. Yep. Probably even more important than more important than the technical ones in, in some cases. Highlight the task, right? It says, uh, however, this blah, 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 blah. All right. However, this piece is dedicated to giving specifics of what your responsibilities were in that particular scenario, as well as any objective that was set for you before you dive into what you actually did. So your response task as e as email marketing manager, my target was to increase our email least list by uh, at least 50 percent in one quarter. Share how you took action. Right give details. I started by going through our old blog posts and adding like what it basically what did you do and 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 detail out how, what led you down that path. I kind of always go back to the scientific method, right? And then dish out the results, right? You want to give as a result those additions to our email strategy. I was able to increase our subscriber list to 20 from 25,000 to 40,000, right? So you got a story, right? You have a problem. The, the situation is you want to look at it. Let me scroll back up so we get it. The task at hand, the action and result. And really, this kind of lays out what it would look like in a Jira ticket as well, too. Uh, so that gives you that mindset as well, too, right? So that's just a quick overview. Our, our guest is here. We can get back to this at a later time. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to, to D. And she could take off from there. Okay. So for those who just are showing up, thank you for joining us. Um, like I said, this guest, I've known him since the 99s and 2000s. He is definitely a go-getter in the business space. Now his new space is uh, solar. And uh, again, we find uh, the tech in all things. So without further ado, we're going to bring up Anthony Gardner with Option B Energy. Hi. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me, finally. <laughs> uh, and, and D, this is about the best lighting you're going to get, okay? We're it's, not it's, it's okay. It's okay. As long as we can hear you and you are not frozen, we're going to take what we can get yeah, on this stuff. beautiful Saturday because I know it is live in Houston. This is prime yeah. brunch time. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you was frozen in the back like this. Frozen like this. 
But it's certainly, D, thanks for having me. Tamika, thanks for having me. I appreciate the time to kind of, you know, sit on your platform and kind of talk about, you know, just a little bit about kind of my background and then get into more so about, you know, clean energy, sustainability, and more importantly, solar, which plays a major role in how we are going to capture energy and use energy for now and certainly in the near future and long term. So I've been in business development. I've been a marketing business consultant for over 30 years. I have uh, worked in probably about 10 different industries and have generated north of $100 million um, in, you know, directly because of my efforts in these, in these industries. Uh, and that's just in solar uh, in the last eight years that I've been uh, in this uh this industry. Uh, it's growing at a substantial pace. The technology is growing. I mean, it's, it's being developed, I would say, every three to six months, there's, you know, better, faster, uh, more uh, efficient ways in how we capture energy. And uh, again, I appreciate you having me here uh, to talk about solar and certainly from uh, the position of, you know, being a minority in this space. Um, there's a great opportunity for not only minorities, but for anyone that is looking to get into the solar business. So, I mean, I kind of start really from just kind of talking about solar and how it's evolved uh, over the last 20 years or so. Um, you know, solar has been around for, for many, many years. Um, in fact, more than 50 years. Uh, and most times when there's new technology, you're going to find that the military is the first to kind of get it and tinker with it and, and you know, in some cases even weaponize it. Uh, and then at some point they then introduce it to the general population. So I'd say over the last 25 years, solar has been, you know, a viable way to capture and use energy. Uh, it was very expensive 25 years ago. However, each year it's, it's, it's going down in cost for the panels. Uh, certainly the inverters and the way that we actually even build and, and, and place the systems, whether it's a ground mount or a roof mount. Uh, but I can say that it kind of started roughly about 15, 20 years ago on the West Coast. For those of you that are located in California, you probably noticed that a good number of uh, the houses you see around are covered in solar. Um, and so it really was adopted in a, in a meaningful way in California. And then it merged over a few years later into the Northeast uh, and then parts of the Midwest. Uh, and now solar kind of moves basically regional and, and local because it's based on incentives and programs that are offered through the utility. So solar is certainly not a one size fit all. Uh, however, it is a very predictable and reliable investment. And I use the word investment because it's not necessarily something that you need, it's, it's, it's really a want now, but eventually solar will become a need uh, just because of the rising costs of, you know, uh, energy and the way we've been using it traditionally. So um, that's kind of, kind of the overall kind of snapshot of solar from just kind of this part of it. But D, you guys may have more questions and I can kind of get into kind of where we are today. Right. and where it's kind of emerging and, and kind of get into those details. Okay, so before we dig in that, because I know Tamika, she got she has questions about solar. She definitely has questions. When we right. first met, you are a marketer. You worked for a marketing company. Why solar? Why did you go and venture off into solar? So with that past experience working with a premier uh, marketing firm that did a lot of product launch strategies and branding and uh, web design and content creation uh, for companies like Coca-Cola, Kodak, Western Union, just to name a few. I learned a great deal about, you know, how companies market and, 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 and sell their products or services. Uh, and that uh, in seeing how you can influence the masses to gravitate towards your brand. Um, and this just a history of just being in business. I started a consulting firm. And so I made a decent amount of money. I was making, you know, 
you know, I'd, I'd clear a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I was pretty content, right? So one of uh, my clients had uh, a few friends that were engineers. This is back in 2013, and they uh, said, "Well, look, there these these guys that." They're engineers. They're really good at kind of tinkering with things and building things. Uh, and they're in the solar business. I said, wow, solar. I don't know much about it. Kind of just basic knowledge. But he said, well, these guys need someone to help them penetrate into some emerging markets. And they need someone to help with their customer facing documents and their content and the thing to kind of drive a company. Uh, to invest in solar. I said, well, I can do that. I've done that for many years. I'd like to meet with them. So long story short, I met with them and they told me about solar. They told me about panels and racking systems and inverters and 30 degree tilts and PV systems and wiring, string inverters, singular inverters, you know, ground mounts, roof mounts. I mean, all this technical stuff. So for the first month, it was kind of Chinese to me. It was like, I don't comprehend. I don't know what you're talking about. I went to school for business. I have a business degree from Cal State University, Northridge. So I'm really a business guy. So the long story short was, hey, we want to introduce you to solar. We'd like to bring you on to kind of, you know, help with our operations and how we, you know, market the idea of solar. I said, well, okay, give me about a month. So I did some research and learned about it. And they gave me a great little retainer and a percentage of the margin. Um, so I said, let me get out there. I'm a one man band. I can get out there and I'll market. So I redid the contract, redid the customer facing documents, uh, retained a marketing company to help with kind of the look and feel, the visuals, rebranded the website and, you know, kind of looked at three things. One, what's important to the off taker or the investor in this one, what's the return on investment or return rate of return Two, you know, what is this? you know, solar array look like attached to my roof or ground? And three, you know, what are the financial benefits from the standpoint of if I invest in this, what does that look like with the tax credit applied, any state incentives and through a net metered program? Those are all the drivers of solar. And then the third thing, I'm sorry, this is the third thing. Uh, how does this solar attach to my meter affect my bottom line? What does it reduce in my consumption and use of electricity? So it'll be your meter uh, without solar and your meter with solar. And what's the difference, right? So I say, I put all that together and I say, okay, let me get out there and let me hunt. So I kind of targeted South Carolina, North Carolina back in 2013, 2014, up until 2017, they had a $1 a watt rebate. For those that are in solar, you understand how significant that is from, a, from that financial position. So if you invested in a, say, 1.2 million in a solar array, that, let's say that's a 500 kW. I'll explain some of these things a bit later. That's about a 1.3, 1.2 million dollar system. Well, if you're getting a dollar watt rebate along with favorable depreciation and the you know tax credit, at the time it was like 30 something percent. 60% of your initial investment is going to go back in your pocket year one. So that's good for the manufacturer that invests in solar. For me, individually, I was making anywhere between 90 to 120,000 per project in my pocket. I was doing five of those on average a year. So by 2017, I was clearing anywhere between four hundred to six hundred thousand dollars. My first year, I made one hundred eighty thousand. My second year, I made a little over three hundred thousand. My third year, I was in the four hundred plus. That's individual profits investing in solar. Now, that doesn't mean it's right for the residential market. However, there are guys in the resi market that are making north of a quarter of a million dollars a month. I was in the commercial industrial, so it, it started making a lot more sense. Right. Uh, so that's just the financial benefits. The good thing about solar is it's good for the planet, man. It's, I mean, it's a no-brainer. We're harvesting power from the sun. I mean, duh.
duh. How, I mean, how much sense does that make? You know, it's clean energy. We're reducing our carbon footprint. It's just a benefit long-term, short-term, any term you look at. An investment in solar just makes good business sense. You know, it's a, it's a viable, predictable investment. It's not volatile like the stock market. It has no moving parts. It's virtually maintenance-free. Maybe the first year an inverter might go out, but that's just covered by the manufacturer's warranty. Uh, but other than that, it just sits on the roof or in the backfield somewhere, and it just generates revenue. So it's a win-win. It's clean energy. And the new technology with storage is bringing it to a whole nother frontier of opportunity because now there's a good potential in the next few years that everyone could potentially become grid independent where you just literally just harvest power during the day. Some of that power that's harvested from the panels is going into your battery storage that you'll use later at night. And now with the smart homes and the smart meters and all these different things that are being developed today, now they'll be married together and it'll be a seamless kind of, we're grabbing power from the sun. We're storing some of that power during the day. We're using that power at night based on what we use the most, whether it be, you know, air conditioning or lighting, you know, hot water, that's most of the things. And then during the day, you might run your dishwashers, your washer dryers that could be energy hogs. But these systems now are coming into place where it's an open architectural platform where they all kind of understand each other's language. And then it's about efficiency. It's about smart usage of how you capture energy and how you distribute that energy around the house or manufacturing plant, and then how it's kind of all come together to make it a real smooth kind of way that you use it and uh, certainly how you capture it. So it's beneficial for me to get in the business. I'm here, I'm a lifer in this business okay. because it's still in its diapers, right? Mm -hmm. It's still in its infancy and it's only growing. Um, and so, yeah, it's a, it's a good industry to be in. You know, you did have several questions. I'm going to ask my question first. Okay. <laughs> All right. So my question would be related to, uh, we see the big controversy about cryptocurrency and and, the, it, and how that looks for, you know, the mining of it, right? And so I know there's a big push in Nevada uh, to build a, uh, uh, basically a cryptocurrency city, but are you seeing an uptick in people who are mining Bitcoin or mining uh, any type of cryptocurrency and solar? Are you seeing a big uptick in that? Well, maybe I need to understand your question. When you use the term mining, what is that? Mm -hmm. What does that really mean? So um, um, let me give you a good example. So there are containers out there that you can buy and store like an, an, an exit controller or a GPU or CPU, and they generate a lot of heat, right? But they, so being that they generate a lot of heat, they also need a lot of cooling as well too, right? So we're talking about power being consumed, right? So I think in certain countries, they've banned mining. I think, I think it was China that banned mining in, in that. And so to me, it, I always looked at solar as one of those things to use in terms of, hey, I need these solar panels on my on my containers or on my data centers so I can continue to mine whatever Bitcoin, not mine, like not drilling, but mining uh, on a CPU or a GPU perspective. OK, right now I get it. So you're talking data center. So mm -hmm. that's kind of more of my language. Yes, solar has been a big, big driver of how to help in the capture of energy for these energy hogs like data centers. Like you mentioned, they generate a lot of, uh, uh, they use a lot of electricity and they need some way to offset, you know, a good portion of that cost to power these systems. So traditionally over time, over the years, Solar certainly played a solid role in capturing energy and allowing these data centers to, to utilize that energy from the solar array. Some of the bigger, bigger uh, players in the market, national brands, have utilized solar to power these data centers. Solar is not 
the kind of full provider of all the electricity, but it can, in many cases, handle the lion's share of the energy needs for these types of data centers. Uh, there are always going to be some level of connection to the grid, uh, meaning like the utilities. Uh, but what happens is they'll in, put in place what's called a bi-directional meter. So when solar is not being used, let's say you're a manufacturer or whatever, you're not using the energy uh, during the day. Let's say you're closed on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday that bi-directional meter reverse spins and sends all that power back to the grid. And here's the good benefit of that. That utility is going to buy that at the rate they're selling it to you per kilowatt hour. So there's, you know, so many different benefits to solar, but you're right. These data centers, these, these energy hogs that are just kind of just, hey, we're systems, we operate, we're processing fast, and we use a lot of energy Solar can certainly make up some of that power generation and, and be very efficient for those types of. And if you know anybody that has a huge center that needs a solar array, <laughs> I'm your guy. Uh, and we call those normally what we call those are utility scale projects, which are kind of larger out of the norm. You know, you're talking 10 megawatts, you know, that could occupy, you know, you know, 10, 15, 20 acres of land space to provide enough, you know, power to, to kind of generate or even, you know, power those systems. So, yeah. You got you. Uh, you did have a question and it says, do, uh, I guess it should be does, does the solar industry have insurance for places that deal with season weather like hurricanes or solar panels strong or the solar panel strong enough to deal with the pressure that it brings? Yeah, that's a great question. It's a common question actually. Uh, solar, actually, 99% uh, of the time, these panels are attached to what we call a racking system. Uh, this is on a roof mount or a ground mount. Now, on a ground mount, you know, these are going to be, you know, systems that, and it just depends on if they have trackers, single axis trackers, or if they're just a stagnant, due south, tilted, 30 degree, due south. Um, but they're going to be pounded in the ground six feet or, 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 or more. Uh, so this system won't go anywhere. Uh, the solar panels themselves can have the actual modules and within a golf ball size hail at, you know, 90 plus miles. I don't know if you guys have ever seen uh, a jungle windshields are still there, right? This could be from 50 years ago. So they're very, very, very uh, constructed. Um, and most, you know, solid developers or solar companies use tier one panels. So they're highly vetted um, and they, you know, can withstand the test of time. This system will last, you know, 50. Anthony, you, you're getting frozen. You're going in and out on us. At but you know, most of the time, I lost you guys there. Yeah. Yeah, you're going in and out. <laughs> we don't want you. We frozen on the nose. <laughs> frozen on your nose. We gonna wait, we gonna wait till you, you get unfrozen over there. <laughs> we don't want that living on the internet. <laughs> but we are here waiting back for you when you get unfrozen. And the reason why I had asked about the crypto uh, situation, because I see a lot of um, 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 like a solar power kit for mining that you can attach to the house that people are actually selling and so forth. So like, uh, you know, you, you know, you'll see you'll see these right here. But here's like a rig, right? And this rig, this rig, sixteen thousand dollars. But imagine, you know, how much cooling you gotta have for this rig inside the house, and how much power you're pulling now. You don't want that electric bill and paying that every every month. That ain't what you want. Uh, so, so that not that, that could be your house power. huh? I said not sucking on your house power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's okay. a lot. 
Anthony, you back? The last thing that we heard was you said uh, something about 15 years. I think you were saying they usually last about 15 years. Uh oh. Frozen again. I don't know who's your provider, but they don't want you to be great. And AT and T, and this AT actually AT leads me to, back to where I have a loft in downtown Houston. I need solar, so this would not happen. Right? <laughs> no, no, that's just the internet provider, AT and T, and they're uh, yeah. I've got to reevaluate them now. They don't want you to be great. For that. Yeah. So back to the question regarding, um, you know, you know, acts of God, bad weather. Uh, or if a system is damaged, 99% of the time, it's going to fall under the homeowner's warrant, uh, you know, insurance or the manufacturing plant's insurance. So there's no bump in their premiums when they install solar. Um, and solar actually brings, adds value to the property. So if you in the future look to sell it, it's already retrofitted with solar. Excuse right. me. So that brings a, a great amount of value. And then also, I, I want the audience to understand um, you're also in the commercial sector of solar as well. So these projects are massive. They're football fields full See, of right. solar energy. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, I'm not sure if you're still there. I didn't. You I dropped. Yeah, you dropped. Yeah, you, you dropped. Okay. You we can we can easily we can easily do a part two. So if you guys, any of your you know your listeners, try, I can try I, try this for me. Try turning off your camera and do it with your camera off. I know D hates that. I just want to test to see if your camera is probably hogging up some of your bandwidth. I think we're good now. Looking at the bars of my uh, okay. st signal strength. Okay. And I don't even think it's the camera. What it's doing okay. is it's dropping to the bottom and it's popping back up. It's dropping, mm -hmm. it's popping back up. So yeah, I apologize. We'll be better it's prepared awesome. next time. So it's let's awesome. get to the questions. So hopefully that answers their question uh, as far as like, you know, with the resiliency of solar. Um, any other questions? Yeah, there's one on the screen. Uh, so, yeah, so Engineering Cannabis asks, can I speak to the predictive analysis and machine learning? in the implementation of solar energy from weather conditions and power consumption and autonomous robots in the industry. In engineering cannabis, you're more than welcome to shed some more light on the predictive analysis and the machine learning. But what yeah. I'm <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so what we do uh, when we size these systems, there's a part of it where we analyze you know, historical uh, usage of, of the energy uh, to, the, to the meters on site. So we'll do what's called a feasibility study and an energy bill analysis to determine one, what's the right size system to place at this location. We don't want to overproduce because if they don't have battery storage and it's just only solar, that energy, if they're not using it, it has to go somewhere. So we have to size the system based on their historic 12 months of usage in the past. And then we soft size the system. One of the things we use uh, is what's called a PV cyst. This does historic, you know, kind of uh, makes a very solid spot on prediction of what this size system is going to generate in kilowatt hours over a, you know, 12 month period. So we can predict with pretty much a 99% accuracy that this system is going to produce X amount of kilowatt hours a year based on its size, where it's located on the planet, and where it's kind of configured and built, whether it be a roof mount or a ground mount, it's normally going to be a tilt due south, right? Now, there's also ways that we can kind of follow the sun, and these are called trackers. So let's say the sun, you know, well, in, in our world, it depends on where you guys live, the sun normally rises on the east and sets on the west. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as it rises on the east, there's imagine the solar panels, right? They're going to, as the sun rises, uh, the panel is going to track that sun. 
And then around noon, it's going to be flat. And these are the panels. And then as it goes to set to the west, the panels are going to tilt and follow the sun. This where my two fingers are meeting, it's going to be on what's called a single axis tracker. And it's going to kind of track the sun. Makes it a little bit more expensive. However, its ability to capture energy uh, increases substantially. But so as far as robotics or, you know, automation, we do have web-based platforms where we can monitor the system, conduct diagnostics, make sure all the inverters are working, the panels are working. And depending on the intelligence of the system, even control the trackers at different times of the day. Um, now, during the winter months, solar doesn't capture as much on those kind of cloudy days but it still captures uh, you know, energy and allows you to convert that direct current into alternating current, which powers lights. So yeah, it's, it's got some predictability to it. It has some ways that you can control that solar array. Um, and you know, robotics are certainly a part of it with the tracking systems and certainly the web-based kind of controls of kind of controlling the inverters and, you know, but, I would say that the technology is just improving every three to six months. You know, five years from now, it's just going to be a whole other ball game. But it's made dramatic uh, strides in the last even three, four years, uh, within the last three, four years. So, yeah. Got you. Another question you got is when having solar panel and, and the generator, is there a reader that can show the measurement of energy that is that, that is stored that is that stored that is stored and usable as well absolutely yes for sure yeah. um you'll be able to not only log on to your web-based platform and then with the smart kind of uh panels electric panels in the homes there's some companies that are emerging now that are able to literally you can literally just like you know your thermostat the smart thermostats and ways that you control you know the energy usage and on your home, you can look to see, okay, I've got X amount of energy to use for night. Um, you take, you can predict and and identify what items you want to use uh, when using that battery stored energy, or even during the day of how you kind of use the energy and 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 and, and what items or appliances you don't use. Uh, so, from a manufacturer standpoint, you know, I've had a manufacturer out of uh, Spring Hope, North Carolina, that has a, I think it's a 1.5 megawatt system, and they have huge energy hogs where they have this machine. It's a million dollar machine, and it cuts through steel that's about like this thick. And so when they power that thing up, you know, it, it generates a lot of energy, and it uses a lot of energy. And so they're under what's called a time of use rate plan where you know, when they're using a lot of energy, their cost, you know, per kilowatt hour goes down. And when they're not using as much, it goes up a bit. So, you know, it just depends on how they're configured with the utility. They have to really be mindful that during that time when it's generating and using a lot of energy, solar plays as big of a role as possible when that energy hog is hogging energy. And that's going to reduce their costs, right? because solar is now gonna kind of make up for that or some of that energy usage when they're using it on their big machinery. So hopefully that answers your question. Yep, you got another question. I also have a question too that we hadn't addressed yet. What kind of skills do you need in order to get into the solar energy? Like, I think you sound like you're more on the commercial side from what D is saying. And we have people that walk around and do like the residential side and I'm sure there's a difference between, I'm pretty sure there's a difference between the two. So what 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 skill sets are, are would, would someone need? Not necessarily for installing the actual um, solar panels, but maybe more on the, the business development side. What are you, what do you think those- Great question. Like? Yeah, great question to, to direct, it, it, you know, Again, I'm not an engineer. I mean, I went to school for business, but to get into the solar business, you don't even have to go to school. 
I mean, I think that with anything, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit. You have to have a drive that's extraordinary. Um, I'm not saying that the solar industry is a kind of plug and play. You've got to have, you know, kind of business understanding and understanding the industry. And I advise anyone that wants to get into the business, you know, I learned it by, you know, simple Google research and YouTube. Just kind of understanding, you know, the, the technical term is photovoltaic systems. And that kind of leads me into our, my company, Option B. Energy. We're going to start opening up these workshops and conferences for individuals. And this is going to be in person where we'll give you kind of the A to Z of solar, how to get into the solar business, whether you are an originator or you are a full turnkey provider, meaning you have an in-house sales team, you have an install crew, you have project managers, you have in-house design. Uh, and so you're a full provider, fully integrated solar developer where you can actually, you know, approach a manufacturer on the idea to invest in solar, win the contract, start the kind of build of the system. Um, and then from that point, you'll kind of get into kind of the, in the weeds of it, how to get, you know, your electrician, electrician license, your permitting and what states you can actually build and develop um, your, your business uh, that makes sense. Because solar is not feasible in every state. There's still some states that need to catch up. Uh, there's still a number of utilities that don't um, have a net metered program, um, which is one of the drivers for solar, whether you're in the resi market, residential, or the commercial industrial, or even community solar. So there are a good number of, uh, you know, ways that you can kind of start your kind of journey into getting into clean energy, solar specifically, and how that can make sense for you. And you can put yourself in a position to make more money you've ever seen. Uh, but I've always looked at it as if you do the work and you work smart, the money will come. It's really about a love affair with, you know, technology and clean energy. Uh, uh, that's probably one of the most important things on our planet outside of food and water is really energy. So it's a great industry to be in. It's in its diapers right now. It's in its infancy and it's only going to grow. And so in the next three to four months, we're going to start doing some web-based trainings. In addition to on-site, the on-site is going to give you a wealth of knowledge, the A to Z. We'll have the panels. We'll look at systems. We'll explain you know, how to get in the business, how to get your business started, and get some skin in the game. Now, the qu another question we got, I, I have, and I see the question in the chat as well, too. What, um, how long has the company been around? My company since two, so option B since 2017. Okay. Right. So let, let, let's get to this question. Oh, it came up. D, if you want to put it back up. There you go. In the future, will option B have technology that powers solar? Or energy at night. I read this somewhere that, but can't remember the article of where that came from. What yeah, so my company, Option B, we're, we're more of a consulting firm. We work with some of the larger solar developers across the world. Um, I was got a client out of Africa and a few others that are in Europe uh, and certainly here in the state side. And what we do is we work with those companies to help them kind of, you know, generate opportunities in emerging markets. That's really the core of who we are. We help them establish their customer facing documents, you know, how they approach the market and the tools needed to properly hunt and find projects in addition to marketing support and direction and, and to make them more efficient operationally. The challenge with solar, let's just really talk about it really from a 10,000 foot view, you know, there are a lot of solar companies that have started off that have went belly up. They couldn't sustain uh, in the industry because they maybe they made miscalculations. Maybe they bought too much equipment and didn't have enough projects, or perhaps they you know threw out their cash flow, um, and then they didn't really kind of buy or develop or harvest and fulfill the the actual equipment based on contract, not based on just let's store this for you know, future projects. And the, the, the dance of that and really dealing with the procurement of equipment 
is that, you know, the panels pricing does change. You know, a good percentage of these panels are coming out of China. Uh, and so there have been many times where there's kind of supply issues uh, and making sure you have the most updated, most efficient panels. Because panels started off at, you know, 250 watts all the way down to north of 500 watts, which are capturing more energy. They're becoming larger. That's I don't want to get into the really the technical sides of it. Um, but um, the answer to that specific question, battery storage has now made a really big push and certainly has uh, become more uh, viable and caught up with the technology of the panels. So at night, you know, there are, you know, providers such as Generac, uh, uh, Tesla, uh, Enphase, LG, Sonnen, and there's utility scale batteries that will store that power during the day so that you can use it at night. That technology is definitely there, it's viable, and it's being used today. Well, one of that that kind of relates to one of the questions. That, right, it went right into the that, that next yeah. one. <laughs> uh, how about the Tesla battery being used in the solar system? How is that affecting the solar energy market? So, <laughs> you know, I I have been a part of projects that have used Tesla. I would say Tesla is definitely the uh, the uh, the premier provider of storage, uh, battery storage. Um, but there are some providers like Generac and others that have, you know, technology that's just as efficient and just as good and not as costly. The challenge with Tesla is the supply. They make cars. That's their number one thing. So there is a literal, literally waiting list of, you know, projects that are waiting for Tesla. But there's other providers such as LG, as I mentioned, Generac, uh, Sun in, Enphase, uh, and a few others that supply battery storage for solar. Uh, so don't, I mean, you know, Nike is the, only, is the only one that makes running shoes, right? Correct. I prefer Nike, but I do have some Adidas and some New Balance. And some. All right, all right. Options. They, they they work just as well. I mean, I I haven't said, well, my Nikes. I was able to outrun a car. No, it's just you know. <laughs> humor, but. I need some of those. I need some of those like that. All right. So uh, the one question I'm, I'm gonna phrase it this way because we often we we get people that ask this question. Hey, I don't have any experience. I don't know nothing about solar. Um, and you said I need to go on YouTube and look it up. What am I looking up? What what am I what am I what am I going to look up to say I'm gonna come into this space and work with with Anthony uh, and I I want to make sure that I know what I'm talking about before I get there. <laughs> what's the deep hole? The deep yeah. What's my what's what's step one? Yeah. So um, I kind of early in the initial part of the broadcast had kind of conveyed kind of my ignorance. Uh, and really not really understanding solar and you know ignorant is not a bad word it just means you don't know right. um, and so um the first thing i did is i said well look i like free information however at some point to go to the next level you will have to pay eventually so in solar as i've grown i've had to be a part and get certain thresholds and understanding so i've spent thousands and really kind of learning the in industry but that was investing in me. And because of that, I've generated hundreds of thousands of dollars for myself personally. In so I'm a big, assets is what I call that. Exactly. So, but the free game, you know, we from the, we from the yay D, but you want to know the free game? <laughs> yeah. Um, we need to know the free for the people. Okay. To get, the, to get the engine started. Right. Oh, hold you on know, before, you, like, before, before it's you like, start, Anthony, hold on before you start. Is this open to women as well, too? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Are you Don't let her start tracking with her shenanigans. Don't let her do this. Don't let her do this to you. Don't let I'm going to go back to 1819. Women are not allowed to learn anything. What do you mean? No. Come on, Close stop. your ears. Close your ears. Go tend to the children, lady, woman. <laughs> no, those days are far gone. 
No, I encourage it being a father of two. So I understand uh, certainly young ladies that are, you know, progressing in life. I would say that uh, it's welcome, um, not only from uh, just a minority standpoint in the business, because you'll win some nice government contracts that way, uh, minority owned and women owned businesses, but it, there needs to be an emergence. I, when I started in 2013, there was probably like one or two of me in the whole industry. Uh, but it's it's open to everybody. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really big on whoever you are, whatever color you are. If you want to get into an industry that's going to be relevant forever, clean energy is where you need to go. The big at, you know, oil and gas guys, that's old kind of old hat. And the guys that are making the gazillion dollars have been really kind of grandfathered in and they're there. But if you want to start a new legacy and really, I mean, I've seen guys start with two guys in a truck, right? Two guys in a truck that were doing little installs. Um, and three years later, they're doing 15 million a year or more. I've seen it dozens of times. So yeah, it's, it's available for anybody to get in. And so in my, how I started or kind of got into, cause I'm more on the consultant side now. And I've really been thinking about kind of getting into the other parts of it, but with anything, there are some risks and I'm big on, you know, kind of minimizing your liabilities and risk or exposure to risk. But I would say that you want to go ahead and type in photovoltaic systems in YouTube, photovoltaic systems on Google. And I can send some links that to UD or Tamika kind of that will kind of kind of send you down the right path, but you have to kind of, you know, control your learning opportunity. There's going to be a lot of information, information overload, um, but you have to start with the basics. First, understand how solar works. Before you do anything, I'm really big on understand how it works. You know, what's needed to generate power? How does it harvest power from the sun? You know, understand the, the panel, which are modules, the, the inverters, the, you know, how it's how an array is configured with combiner boxes. How are they connected to that meter, to that electric panel? You know, understand the government side of it because that plays a part. The drivers of solar are the tax credits. That makes a huge difference in the cost of the system because clean energy you're going to get right now, I think it's a 26% tax credit. That's going to grow up. So if you invest in a solar system, you can offset 26% of that system cost and not cut a check to Uncle Sam. So if you have a tax appetite, that makes sense. You want to offset some of your taxes. Then if you invest in some equipment, so you're a business, there's the financial side of it that's favorable depreciation where you can appreciate some of that asset. Um, and so I've designed cash flows and performance that kind of speak to that over a 20 year spread. But I would say start to understand the solar business. Um, the, the challenge right now I've seen online is that you see so much information, it's hard to connect the dots. Uh, and that's what I hope to do when I conduct these workshops is to show everyone how to connect the dots instead of you scrambling around getting bits and pieces of information, because there's a hundred moving parts that you have to really understand. Um, so that's the government side, the kind of general knowledge side. And then there's the utility side of it uh, and understanding the markets where solar makes sense, where it's easily adopted and the utilities are friendly. And they don't have the skeleton crew that says, yeah, 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 you can connect us to your grid. And it takes six months through the interconnection process. And that's a whole other part of it. Um, where others that it'll take less than 30 days. So understanding the market, gaining some intelligence there, and then, you know, kind of work, what type of, you know, player do you want to be? Do you want to just do sales and then outsource the bill to an EPC, which is an engineering procurement company? Or do you want to be a fully integrated solar developer where you have everything in house? But then you'll also have W2 employees. Whereas if you're sales only, you'll probably have 1099 employees. So there's no kind of you know risk there. It's kind of commission only. 
Um, but if you have W-2 employees, then you're going to inherit more responsibility. You'll get more margin on your deals, but that requires more responsibility. So I would say the first things first, start on YouTube and Google and just learn everything about solar from a technical standpoint before you even think about the business side. And then come ask you? <laughs> For a fee. <laughs> <laughs> and that's option B? Option B dot energy. Option B dot energy. Yeah, I mean, I'll give you one-on-one -on -one consultations or uh, I know in a few months, I've got some partners. We're going to start doing these trainings around the Southeast. Uh, and we're going to go into the states where it's emerging, the Kentuckys of the world and other states where solar's right at the cusp of kind of getting where it needs to be. Uh, but it uh, it's a great industry to be in. It's very fulfilling. Solar's sexy. It's really, really cool. Um, and it's, you know, it's just, it's going to get better and better. Now, we, t we, say, we say solar is sexy. What, do, what are we seeing, um, not just in, in the, from the data center side and the car side, but like I, I, I'm always looking at it from like sports arenas, like your stadiums and, and so forth, where, you know. Yeah, that, that, that ship has already sailed. Okay. Solar is in, you know, one of my bigger, bigger accounts, uh, projects that I made a lot of money on was Metro Mont. They're called Metro Mont. Uh, Metro Mont um, is based in South Carolina. They're in Spartanburg, Greenville. And they are the fabricators that provide the uh, cement for national team uh, sports teams. They actually built the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta. They spent about $4 million on solar. Uh, and then all of just about, I'd say, a good lion's share of the football, baseball uh, stadiums have solar. So solar is, you'll see solar on churches. You'll see universities using solar. You'll see it in manufacturing plants. You'll see it for data centers. You'll see them on residential customer homes. You'll see solars as standalones to power lights at night, street lamps, just so many different uses. It's just a, just a smart way to capture energy. Um, so, yeah, it's it's everywhere and it's growing. It's not everywhere, but it's everywhere from a standpoint of right now. It probably accounts for less than three percent of power generation for the planet. But in the next 10 years, it'll probably be north of 10, 15 percent. And, you know, it's a hundred million billion dollar comp, you know, industry that is just growing and growing and growing. Uh, but we are still in our bait, our diapers, as mentioned. And this is a good time to be a part of it. Um, I, you know, when I came on in 2013, it was kind of like sci fi, like, whoa, that if people didn't believe it, you'd be mm -hmm. surprised how many people said, ah, that didn't work. Now it's common, it's common and it's, it's being adopted across every platform and every way that we use energy and capture it. Now, would you su suggest somebody who doesn't want to go to school, maybe they uh, maybe they attend a workshop or would you suggest them go to college first or? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm it. reluctant to give someone life decision making advice. <laughs> uh, hey, you know. I know some people that have college degrees and they're making coffee at Starbucks. So right. you interpret that however way you want. Uh, I know some people that go to college that make well over a million a year. I know that statistically most millionaires never went to college. Right. They got right into the thick of it and really, you know, had extraordinary focus. And I think that's really what it's all about is, you know, you have to have an internal drive. You have to be self-motivated. You know, I've led sales teams of 30, 40 people to a small teams as small as five, six people. And I've watched, you know, large sales teams where, you know, the 5% are the ones that are making the most money. Those are the people that you don't have to hold their hand. Those are the people that you don't have to remind to be on time. Those are the people that you don't have to tell them to study and come prepared. 
and to really be a student of the industry. You know, it's just kind of like in sports, right? You got the guys that stay a lot of their, spend a lot of their time on the sidelines and you got guys that are in the game. So the guys that are in the game are putting in the work and they're, they're trying to be a pro. They're trying to be the best at what they do. And if you're trying to be the best at what you do, what you do, you're going to fall in that top 5%. I mean, it's just how life works. You know, you don't get a trophy for showing up. I don't know what's going on today, but I'm cut from the cloth. Showing up doesn't get you a, a trophy. Right. right. So that's kind of how, you know, I would advise no matter what you do, whether you go to college or you don't, you got to do more than show up. You've got to put in the work because yeah. people will see the shine. You know, D, they see me when I was in Atlanta rolling around in a convertible Aston Martin, the big mansion and all that stuff. They see the shine, but they don't know about the grind. Right. That's that's the difference. You can see the shine all day, but do you are you willing to put in the grind? Well, you well you know how that goes. You know you can see my shine. Well, you know you know how that goes. You know if you if you have if you have um if you have if you have the stuff you know we we get it all the time. It's either rented or. <laughs> it's rented or that's not yours or you or know it's how, not you, what it, it, it is like that yeah. that's a Honda yeah that, they see it four years they, they see it like, four years they see it four years later in my garage parked so I've been renting it for four years right yeah that Porsche you've been seeing sitting in the driveway that A Street Hummer that that Range Rover the house it's all rented and leased right okay yeah sure Right, and but we get it all the time, and so that's why I wanted to have. I know you're driving one of those nice little rockets, that 911 <laughs> zipping around, drop looking crazy. What's the problem? Well, let's see, zero to sixty and two point what? Two point six. But listen, <laughs> disrespectful to other cars, just disrespectful. It's they will okay, and it's not, it's not fair. And I'm like, not, I, you know what? You should have raced me. You should have brought that out to Atlanta when I was there. You should have raced me. I don't know. I had 520 horsepower. But I, I don't know about 2.6. I think that 911 is the big dog, though. Mm, I think yeah. that we don't have those kind of conversations here because it goes a different way. All right, guys. These are just <laughs> it goes a different way. It goes a different way here. These are just fruits mm -hmm. of our labor, guys. This is just don't do that. It's just mm, but is, but is, you know. Us but feeble I'm not women, mad. that's feeble women. There I go with my shenanigans. <laughs> us feeble women. Well, I'm not mad at it, though. But what, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm simply saying is I wanted to have you on the show to talk about, because we talk about tech from, you know, um, a, I don't want to say a labor perspective, because it can be interpreted that way. But I'm, I'm saying from a technical perspective, and this is more on a consultant and sales perspective and just a different industry of where actually tech covers as well, too. We, we've talked about wind turbine and IoT devices. Like these are actually things that are sitting on the edge as well, too. So one of the, one, I wanted to have you on the show to give a different perspective of like, hey, you may not like this part of tech that we talk about here's another part of tech if you want to look at it from that perspective or we're talking about solar or you're talking about you know a, a guy starting off or a, a company starting off with just two people and then they move from two people to 15 million right and then some right so giving the idea of because we often get that we can't do this or we can't be in that space or they're not black people in that space. And you're a black person, you're in that space, and I'm sure you're willing to help other black people or anybody that want to get in the space. It, it, it's all about let's get in this space and how much money can we make? And can we make this money together? Like you may go off and do something and come back and get me for a project or something. We've all like been that. exposed. We right. cannot say that you, we did not bring solar energy, clean energy to the table. Right. Yeah. So I'm for all of that. I think that, you know, it's an industry that can, it doesn't matter your color. And specifically me being in this industry for over eight years, 
I haven't seen a lot of minorities. Uh, I've seen them more on the kind of the manufacturers of equipment. They may be sales reps or they may be, you know, playing some part on the finance side of it because there are providers that if you can't buy the system uh, as a direct purchase, you can finance it. Or they may be a part of a power purchase agreement or a lease of the system. Um, but to be an actual solar developer, um, I think that, again, it takes, you know, kind of extraordinary drive and a willingness to have a, you know, to, to, to sit back and have a thirst for knowledge. Because I think like with anything, especially this industry, because it is deals with new technology, even though it's been kind of it's now being used on the retail level uh, to the general public. Uh, I would still to still to 98 percent of the population. They don't understand it. Uh, so if you're going to kind of invest your time and money into a new technology, a new industry, uh, it should make complete sense for you to kind of understand it and have and become a student of it and take it serious. Um, and so it doesn't have a color. I think it's just when I'm out there and I'm, I'm, I'm meeting with these manufacturers and I'm an expert in this industry and I know what I'm talking about and they can throw me a thousand questions and I can answer them. And with a consultative kind of response, they trust me, they believe in me and they are willing to cut a check. I mean, I've done dozens and dozens of projects that are, were, you know, these are large capital sales where the average cost for a system in, in my experience has been $800,000. I've sold systems north of 6 million. So you have to understand what you're talking about. It doesn't matter your color. It just matter you, do you have a thirst for knowledge? Because no one's going to cut a check. Oh, because, oh, because he's a minority. Let me just give him this opportunity. Be a pro. It should be about color. Are you using that as your card? It's about having better than average understanding and being a pro and an expert in what you do. So you need to start with that kind of idea in mind. Um, and then you take it from there and you progress. I would say that we need more of us in it. Um, and, and certainly with a lot of the information that's coming down the pipe about where we're going to be economically in 10 years. <laughs> exactly where you need to be because if you understand again outside of water and food i would say energy well let's talk about god no matter your religion food and water energy mm. that's it right. and it's energy is we're in the southeast they love their air con their air conditioned their conditioned air rather <laughs> yeah so um I just think that you should go for it. If you, you know, if mm -hmm. understand the industry, I love it. I mean, it's just, there's so many different positions you can, you can hold in this industry. Again, one, if you're on the finance side or the build side or the development side or the utility scale side, which, you know, is a longer sales cycle. And these are systems that take up 300 acres, 600 acres. And you're working on the government side or, there's just sustainability. You know, a lot of today's employers are putting this badge on their websites and it's kind of a part of their overall kind of who we are as a company. Uh, you know, they're really pushing sustainability and clean energy and efficiency and being, you know, respectful to the planet. So that attracts their new, you know, college graduates to say, look, we're a sustainability clean energy firm. We adopt it. And that attracts new hires, you know, they're progressive, they're forward thinking, you know, so it has a lot of kind of residual long term rippling effects of good, positive kind of good vibes about kind of the clean energy field. So I think it's something you can be proud of to be a part of it and you can make more money than you've ever made in your life. And you can wake up and giggle and say, wow, I'm, I'm really doing something good for the planet. And I'm also making more money than I've ever made in my life. Uh, right. So, yeah, I encourage all of that, everybody to kind of shoot your shot. And if you go through our workshops and our trainings, we will give you the best kind of connect the dot process of, of how to really get into the business. We cover about 30 different subjects. Uh, we're going to be doing one day workshops, two day workshops, 
and it's going to kind of address all of the kind of ins and outs of solar and the different roles in solar and what role you think makes sense for you and based on your capabilities and where you want to go. You can go small, you can start big, you can start in the resi market and then get into the commercial industrial, which that leads into community solar. That's becoming a big thing now or has been over the last few years, uh, where it's distributed energy resources, whether you're providing software to kind of kind of marry these systems together. This is what I spoke about earlier uh, with battery storage and the solar and the panels and the racking and the that whole thing. And then um, from a standpoint of even government. So you're finding that a lot of jobs that are being created that are in this clean energy market. Uh, solar is one part of it. You have the wind, you have hydro, um, but solar is the one that's kind of the best for kind of on-site power generation. I mean, you're not going to have this 300 foot by 50 foot windmill in your backyard, and you're not going to have this super costly hydro system or, you know, all these big, huge generators. I think solar with battery storage is really good, although energy generators are good as well um, uh, to generate power in case of natural disasters, floods, earthquakes, sure. whatever. But solar is the most, you know, pr predictable, reliable, most cost-effective way to kind of, you know, establish the way that you capture energy, uh, clean energy. So, yeah. Got you. Do you got a question for us? No, I'm question? over here, you know, in the chat and in engineering cannabis is on his shenanigans. You know, he is, he'll one, two punch you and then laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bring his, his, his comment up on the stage. And, uh, and the, feel free to stand. drop the link in case anybody want to come up and ask a question or whatnot. I, I did drop it already. Okay. I did uh, drop the join the screen link again. I'll drop it. But engineering cannabis and his wisdom says this is big boy talk. There, this is million dollar game. The tech and solar is very lucrative, but at Tam, we're looking for twenty five dollar an hour game. Just put in enough effort, game. You know you on your you on your shenanigans right now. That is not why we are here. But however, he is he is saying that to say that um, this is good information. Like, that, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, hey, I I have a relative that has been a worker bee for a company for 20 years. They live in a million dollar house in uh, Seattle and they do mm -hmm. well. They're solid. I know some people that don't want to be a worker bee. They don't want $30 an hour, $50 an hour. They want a million an hour if they can get it. Yep. Depends on what where you want to be and what you want to do and accomplish in life. Like I can't recommend anybody do this or that. I just know my experience and what I've seen, not just talk, mm -hmm. uh, real things you can see and feel and touch and know that if you put in the work, these are going to be the results. Yeah, so, so so let's let's rip off the band aid. Let's let's really talk because you know I you know I like I like to talk like real life stuff. In in the industry, what is the potential earnings um, you think over the next? Let's go for the next two years. So when you say industry as a from like a ten thousand foot overall, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, there's probably right now about 2,000 large scale solar farms being built. And each solar farm is probably north of $100 million. You do the math on that. Mm -hmm. And there are projects in the pipeline. Solar is moving at such a rapid pace right now. There's not enough supply. There's not enough equipment. So they have to go through the national distributors for batteries, panels, racking systems. The demand is so much so right now 
that the build is for something significant is six months off. There's just no supply. That is a beautiful position to be in mm-hmm. for an industry where the demand is so high that the, the supply can't keep up with the demand. Mm-hmm. So I'll just leave it there from that perspective. I can get online and give you some hard facts, <laughs> but let's just talk from a 10,000 foot view. Right. There's such a demand for clean energy and solar. That's where you see from a government standpoint, they're investing all this hundreds of millions and billions of dollars into infrastructure. We did a project in DC where we put solar on electric on 11 government buildings, the National Archives, et cetera, where we put solar. This was five years ago. So. Right. Now, would you suggest someone, since there is a, a supply shortage, get into manufacturing or it's a little too late for the game and everybody yeah. got to drop? So that's a whole nother one hour discussion. (laughs) You definitely ripped off the Band-Aid. Hey, when you say it's no supply, I hear opportunity. I hear like General Motors needs to, because they're starting to make their own car and chips. Yeah, I hear these many auto auto manufacturing place like a General Motors, like a Ford, like a Toyota, like a Kia, who already has these manufacturing places should be producing solar panels. That's what I hear. Yeah, I mean, that's a smart, witty question and kind of observation. Um, the, the challenge is, is that 90% of these panels are coming out of China. China has a stronghold on it because they make these really good, efficient tier one panels. Um, and the cost for the panels are substantially less than if we build here in the U.S. So Canadian Solar and a few others out of uh, Canada and in Mexico, they have some panels, but they're not considered some of them. Well, Canadian Solar makes tier one panels, but there's some other manufacturers that make panels where you can't really offer a performance guarantee or a warranty that's significant because the panels, the system itself should be, you know, one of the drivers is for a company to spend, you know, millions of dollars on solar is that you offer a performance guarantee and the manufacturer can warranty those systems, you know, for the next 15, 20 years. Um, So, you know, you definitely definitely don't want to invest in technology where it's a little sketchy. Um, And then because the cost to, uh, to, to make these panels on U.S. soil um, causes the financial side for it to pencil out not as well as if you uh, build a system where your equipment is out of China. And it's significant. So, for instance, from a commercial industrial standpoint, you know, if I'm selling a $1.4 million system and I'm using tier one panels out of China, so my cost per watt to buy that equipment, the racking systems, the combiner boxes, all the wiring and uh, battery storage, that could be a challenge. And we're laughing at engineering cannabis. He's the one with the shenanigans. That, he- uh, that could be a challenge because the cost of panels are significantly less than what's gonna affect your margin. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we should be manufacturing these stateside uh, but right now, China is just winning. And we know they're winning in a lot of different industries when it comes of to course. manufacturing. So if you want to keep your margin substantial, you're going to go out of China. And these companies are solid. I mean, they warranty these systems, these panels, these modules for many, many years. And, and you know, just building it. The, the, I forget, dang, why am I going a mental blank? It's a certain uh, uh, component in these panels, in the, in the actual... Uh, coating mm-hmm. uh, that is harvested out of Africa. Not surprised. Uh, Which uh, Africa, China, you know, I ain't going to say that. I'm be quiet. <laughs> yeah, so that, it is a lot of moving parts. It's not just a, well, why can't we do this? Why can't I make one in my backyard? Well, you can't. <laughs> 
Um, in terms of the equipment, how about refurbishment or recycling? Is there a way to refurbish basically old, the old panels and all that to basically reuse it for basically a new set itself to refurbish? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. And that's something that's brought up sometimes, actually. Well, you know, most of this, the, the solar is going to be, well, we warranty the system. We offer a performance guarantee for sometimes 20 years, 25 years. So what happens at year 25, these panels do degrade over time. So it's capture rate does degrade down to about an 80% capture rate, around 80, 83%. Um, but again, as mentioned, it's predictable, it's reliable, it has no moving parts. But as far as now, the, the re you know, tearing down the system and recycling, that's something that certainly be, can be done because a lot of it is metal, so you can always recycle metal. Um, and there's been times case uh, some older systems have been sold, uh, but they're clear that the capture rate will be at about you know, 60, 70%. So there can be a significant resell of that system. I don't see this happening that often. It's very rare that once, let's say, a manufacturer will leave a building, they're either going to sell the building with the solar attached, or if they leased it, they may sell it or have it removed. Uh, and they can be reused because these systems do last 50 years. Solar panels will capture energy for the next 50 years. So they're still kind of... Uh, uh, some development of how that will be handled 25 years from now, 20 years from now. But, you know, who knows what we're going to be doing 20 years from now, right? Uh, but there will be uh, uh, companies that will come in, and they exist today, that will come and uh, remove that system and, and recycle it. Um, one more question. Um, in terms of you have different, um, again, you said you had D.C., as different government installation of um, solar energy, how do you monitor it in case of a problem? If in case it's if there's a problem in terms of energy capturing and all that, is there a monitoring system itself to see if there's any problems that occur, and maybe they need to go back and maybe fix some issues around this? Yeah, absolutely. This this uh, monitoring of a system uh, has been around since I've been in the business since 2013. So most of that monitoring is happening through the inverter because the inverter converts that direct current into alternating current and then powers the, the, the lights and whatever that's under the hood in our terms we use under the roof. Uh, every system should come. I don't know any system that wouldn't come with a web-based monitoring platform. The good thing about that is that you'll see your capture of energy by the hour, by the day, by the week, by the month, and the year. And you'll also be able to conduct diagnostics where you can see what inverters are operating optimally or what inverters are not working, what panels, because the way it's set up is set up in strings, right? So it might be strings of four or eight or 16, and they're then combined and you know get into, and then everything funnels through the inverter. Uh, and so you can monitor that system. You see it in a web-based platform and just see all the data you want to see. Tons and tons of data, tons and tons of information, uh, depending on the you know, sophistication of the system. At the very least, you can see its capture rate and what's not working, what's working, and then deploy uh, a way to fix that. And so again, um, again, I'm the kind of data. So, so in terms of you have all these data sources or this web base are they are they companies that capture every data source coming out of that to basically make a prediction of what kind of energy a new installation might incur based on the data patterns from all those previous installation itself yes yeah, so it just depends on the off taker who's going to invest in the system and what they want i mean there's not a one size fit all one thing about solar it's it's highly customizable uh, so if you are a, let's say you're head of the energy efficient division of some XYZ company, and we may say, here's a laundry list of data with, we can share with you, or you could even monitor yourself, whether we are going to monitor the system and provide, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, war like a warranty, or we're going to provide some type of, uh, um, you know, what we call uh, 
the monitoring of the system, maintaining the system, kind of a contract to kind of us to kind of watch it, maintain it, you know, like a maintenance contract. Or if you just want to do it yourself, we'll give you a manual, we'll give you everything, we'll give you a day of training and you can have at it. Uh, so it really depends. It's not an easy answer, but you can configure it however way you want it, depending on what size the system is, what the capabilities of the inverters, and then we work with you to determine the best equipment that you'll need based on you know where you're located, analyzing your you know your use of electricity, looking at your connection points, because you may have you know electric boxes that are outdated. That like I did a project. Um, that's a really really good question. I did a project here in Texas, and we looked at their connection point. And I don't know if they had some type of permitting standard or if they just said their uncle knows how to do the electric connections, but it looked like I'm surprised they didn't have an explosion by now. So we had to come in, which was an add on, re change out their panels, all their wiring and everything to make sure that it could connect. The inverters would connect and do what we wanted it to do for that particular location. So there, there is some engineering that's required to make sure that this solar array is feasible at this site. I have had projects where we cannot connect solar to this, this site. We have to walk away. It's just too expensive. There, they haven't, like there's places in the Midwest where the weather's a little more volatile they don't have a standard um, as far as how they're building these homes or plants, you know, and so they don't have kind of a, a standard. Most states do to where when we send an electrician out to get permitted in order to, you know, uh, uh, attach a solar to this meter or to this location, we can pass with flying colors. There have been projects where we had to stop the build because we couldn't get the permits. Their electric connections were challenged or outdated. Um, and that really gets to kind of the 10,000 foot kind of monster of the infrastructure of America period of how, you know, it's been configured through this old way that we capture energy and how we distribute energy and how we use energy. Uh, so that leads into a bigger discussion, right? Um, but back to you, the core of your question, yeah, it can be configured all different types of ways and ways that we capture that data and share that data and how we can predict and analyze and, you know, fix anything that goes wrong with that system. And it's one last question. In the hospitality industry, especially hotels and all that, have you seen an uptick in the use of solar, especially in, in installation in hotels and other locations in the hospitality sector itself? Yeah, great question. Another great question. So hotels, that is one of the, the most challenging um, setups for solar only because, for instance, a roof mount, right? A roof mount on a hotel, you're going to find that 99% of the time their HVAC systems are on that roof. So there's no place to, to, to place solar, right? If you ever see it, a solar installation, just Google a roof mount. So roof mounted solar at a commercial in, or industrial site. They usually have a lot of roof space most of the time, or they own the ground and the land. So we can kind of send solar off into, you know, 500 feet away in a field where they're not going to expand. They're not going to grow. They're not going to put a building. They just own the land. So it becomes feasible, right? Conceptually, we can put solar on a roof or ground. The challenge with a hotel is, one, they don't have the roof space, and then their ground space is for parking. Right? Okay. So they need that space for parking. Now, if they own the land, there may be some area where we can att attach solar on a ground mount, or we can do a canopy solar array. Excuse me. Bless you. A canopy solar array is just so you go into a parking lot and you see above the cars, there'll be a canopy. We did that with Georgia Tech and a few other installations uh, in Georgia and Tennessee. But with 
you configuring and, and manufacturing a canopy, because a lot of that is custom design, it becomes extremely expensive. That doesn't mean that a company won't adopt solar if it's expensive. So I've had some million dollar deals where the internal rate of return was less than 9%, but they still wanted solar because it fit into their kind of model of where they're going as a company and how they use solar and energy uh, because maybe one of their uh, clients or customers was Home Depot. Like I had a customer that's a logger, a lumber yard, huge lumber company in South Carolina that the numbers didn't pencil very well from a financial standpoint, but they provided a lion's share of their supply to Lowe's and Lowe's demanded they have a clean energy solution in how they use power yeah. and capture power. So they were like, I don't really care about the return. Our client who you know, pays us 200 million a year says we need to adopt solar. Okay, let's build the system. Mm-hmm. So I, mean, I don't, hey, you know. And I think we're gonna see more and more of this pop up really in tech from the startup side. A lot of them use AWS and stuff like that, but as AWS keeps getting more and more expensive, right? And they got to go back and raise more capital. Some people are pulling out of the cloud and actually building their own stuff and hosting their own their own data center, building their own thing. So it, it's, it's, it's a catch-22 in tech. Like people go all the way in on AWS and then they'll pull some of those things back and, and host them themselves and then say, okay, well, let me build this data center and oh, I need need to be green because what we find is a lot of the Gen Z and the Gen uh, Y, they don't want to work for a company if they're not environmental friendly. Right. So that's another that's another aspect that that actually is pushing companies because companies want to hire young talent. Right. right, they want to hire young. They they don't want us dinosaurs no more. They're like, yeah, You're a dinosaur. I'm not a dinosaur. I've had I've had some companies that have had their solar project uh, taken out of their marketing budget. Yep. Think about it. You just said it. You know, there are companies that are larger national brands. They may have a hundred million dollar marketing budget. Right, fifty million dollar marketing budget. Let's put a sign in front of our headquarters that we're all about clean energy and reducing carbon footprint. And we have this million dollar solar array on our roof. Yeah, that's cool. It's saving us 200,000 a year. (laughs) But, you know, our bill is, you know, two million a year. Mm -hmm. But part of that was marketing. Does that make sense? Yep. And the other thing that I've seen, not just the marketing aspect, not just for Gen Y, Gen Z, but also, um, I don't know, uh, how how familiar are you with like the ESG funds? Um, and Yeah, if you're talking your industry and all that is out, why are you speaking Chinese to me? No, so ESG funds would be the clean renewable ETFs, right? Oh, you're talking, okay. So yeah. in our world, well, what we use, we call we call them SRECs, right? Okay. Renewable energy credits. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of the driver, and certainly in the Illinois and different parts of it. Um, government, if that if you're speaking more of a government le- um, leverage and language, um, that that is a that is a really really uh, complicated web. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, as a, you know, being a, a solar developer and a consultant in the industry. Um, and in the CNI market, the drivers are net metering, any rebates, state or local, mm-hmm. uh, federal tax credit, and renewable energy credits, um, and different incentives like that. Um, but I'm the, I'm familiar with what you're talking about, but I haven't used it in any. It hasn't played a role in me developing my projects. Right. So ESG is basically it says ESG investing is a strategy where people put their money to work in companies that have a positive impact on the environment and society. 
So say if I got like a, a, a ETF and I only want to invest in companies that are green and doing renewable energy, me as a consumer, and that and that's a concern of mine, I would go invest into this ETF, right? Because I'm concerned about uh, the state and the well-being for our planet and future kids coming up. So you're talking stock market language. Right, right, right. So a lot of the companies are looking to, there's a big push for this, especially out of the Biden administration to talk about, hey, we need to talk about clean energy and renewable and this climate thing that's going on. If your company is not meeting these goals, hey, we may potentially fine you because you don't meet these goals. So how can you meet these goals so we don't have to find you? And so a lot of this has, has started to, you know, I don't want to say crop up, but caused a shift in budgets and how people move and what they think about building and how they build them, right? Um, even down to the point of what we're talking about, you know, farming, like we see now um, with, I don't want to call it robo farming, but I guess you could look at it like that. Uh, John Deere uh, uh, has tractors that are out there that go out and just you just automate it and the, the, the farmer can go out and be gone all day and do his thing. But it's driven by solar. It's driven by, you know, hey, did you go up and down like I told you to and come back and park? <laughs> right. So yeah. we're, getting that. we're getting to that. At, at even that's the big part what you're talking about but even at our in our at our local lower level environments it, even the, I, I just did the one with the um with the lawnmower with the solar lawnmower that just go out and, and just cut like we're we're at that point now where we're we even shift how we work as humans yeah i mean that's a good a good good point um you know, solar's solar's growing, and a lot of companies now are adopting what's called a B corporation. Are you guys familiar with that? Mm -mm. Yeah, so you can research it. And what it is is it's saying that I am a company that is committed to, uh, you know, uh, being a good you know company that drives positive social awareness and impact from a social standpoint. From uh, and then I'm doing good deeds. I mean, I'm giving you, I'm not giving you the per word definition, mm -hmm. but we are also mindful of how we impact the environment. Um, and, you know, just being a conscious, mindful company in the way that we conduct business, uh, certainly with diversity and, you know, from employees to the environment to, you know, to society as a whole. So a lot of companies are, are coming under that kind of umbrella as a B corporation. And that stamp of approval tends to send the right message to not only the world, but certainly as you look to find new hires to come on board uh, with your firm. So, yeah, I think that it's really showcasing that you are a clean energy company and you've adopted you know, methods to be more efficient and to be mindful of how you capture energy and how you use it. Right. Yeah. And you actually got a question too uh, about your workshop. Um, they wanted to know if, if you stated when it would be posted or uh, when the workshops would occur. Yeah, so we're in the cur current stage of developing kind of look and feel because I'm, I'm currently assessing what's on YouTube because it, it is information overload and it's, it's just patchy uh, and there's no way to kind of provide a meaningful experience for someone that wants to learn solar. It'll take you six months to even understand how to kind of, you don't want to risk your capital or your time to get out there in the water and, and drown. And I've seen, you know, in our industry, hundreds of companies have gone belly up because they didn't understand how to connect the dots, not only from understanding the technology side of it, because there's a lot of guys that can build something, but you have to offer war workmanship warranties. You have to offer a lot of different things 
So once you install that system, you may have some responsibility of how that system is going to work for the next 20 years. So how do you build the right alliances to protect you or offset that liability or that risk? Uh, how do you have your financial partners configured uh, so that you don't have to pay for supply out of your pocket? How do your contracts look, whether it be, you know, a community solar contract or a CNI contract, which is commercial and industrial or a nonprofit? Are you aligned with the paces of the world, the green lendings of the world? You know, what about your project managers? Do they really know what they're doing? Yeah. What are you? What is your speed to build based on the size of the system? Are you able to build in other states where you're not located? Can you outsource the build through an EPC, which is an engineering procurement company? What about your red line? How much are you going to give them of that cost per watt? Where do you want to be margin wise? Do you want to capture at least 25 percent? What, what does that look like for you? What about your cash flow model? How are you going to conduct your energy bill analysis? Because they're, the, 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 the person you're going to sell it to is going to want to see, here's your meter without solar. Here's your meter with this size system attached. How does it reduce my cost for energy over a year spread, a monthly spread? So you have to have the right customer facing documents. Nobody's going to say, hey, you want a solar array? OK, we'll put it up there. <laughs> it doesn't right. work. Like that. So um, there's a lot of different things that you have to understand. My workshop is going to put you in a position to where when you walk away, you'll have six months of understanding. Um, one last, for that. one last question. You talked about the problems with um, structural um, problems in the hotels where the solar panels couldn't be installed except for basically an area on top of the roof. But are there other ways to, are there technologies right now, they're looking at ways to resolve those kind of issues, like making the panels, like if a car is heavier, you change the material of the car. Or are they looking at external ways to build uh, the panels externally far from the hotel roof, but still attached to the structure? What are they doing in terms of trying to alleviate those issues, especially structural issues? Yeah, good question. Um, so uh, I'll start with um, there are panels that have been around and, I, and I, the technology has in, improved where it's called bifacial panels. So it's got the same amount that you capture direct from the sun on the top. The bottom side of the panel is the same material. So there's a reflection when it hits the ground, it shoots that power back up. So you're capturing on both sides of the panels, right? On the top and the bottom. So that could be uh, when you do the engineering and the design could offset some of the panels as far as space that's needed. But as it stands today, you're still going to need substantial roof space. There's just no way around it. Because you build something external to the roof, like with the roof, we build something external, but the roof still the structure. Of it. I mean, think about it from a hotel. So you're saying a 40 foot hotel. We're going to build a contraption that's next to it. Are external. you talking? No, I don't see that as even feasible. <laughs> however, however. Um, there are some hotels that have um, parking garages. So if that hotel is willing to, let's say, let you, if you have three levels, now you're gonna give up some parking space, right? Mm -hmm. Can you dedicate a part of that roof level parking to solar? We've done some projects like that. If they have a parking structure that they can use a portion of that for solar. So let me give you kind of an analysis, understanding from a perspective. So I can put things in perspective. A 100K system, right? This is a 100KW system. This is small, really, in the commercial industrial industry. A 100K system occupies about 20,000 square feet. Okay. Okay. A 500k system occupies about 50,000 square feet.
Now I see what the problem is. Okay. Now, do guys approach me and a lot of my alliances every week with some contraption? And I have the solution. I can that big solar array. I can. I have a thing that's about the size of a phone that will capture all the power you need, and it'll store it in this box about the size of a a car. I'm like, uh, well, after the explosion, let's have another discussion. It was just not there yet. Okay. Now I get what you're talking about. All right. But it's the cost analysis. When you do the parking lot, do you do cost analysis on that space versus the energy input in them? Well, it just depends on where the solar is located. Uh, and, and it depends on how many arrays. And, you know, we're getting into the things I will cover in the workshop. I'd be more than happy to do a one-on-one. You could pick my brain uh, and we can, you know, I have a small little fee and I can give you all the game you need. Uh, but there are, you know, things that are involved that gets a solar project off the ground. One, you have to analyze their usage. You obviously can't put a 500 KW, 50,000 square foot solar array uh, and have it power a house. It's too much power, but it, you have to analyze their usage, right? Uh, and then you have to look at how they're connected to the grid. Um, and then you have to look at, you know, a potential roof or ground mount, what's going to be required, how that array is going to be designed. So we do what's called conceptual layouts of that solar array. And then you have to look at the financials. How much is this system going to cost? What are the rebates, incentives, and tax credits available to me in this region, on this part of the planet, in this city? So solar is kind of local and regional. And again, it's not a one-size-fit-all. It does require some customization. Some things are standard, the equipment, the combiner boxes and racking systems, and, you know, and, and, and inverters, you know, things of that nature. Uh, but some, depending on the project, require some customization. So there's no way to kind of say, this is the way you do this, and it's consistent across the board. It's just impossible. I mean, you know, just engineers know this. They know this. Thank you again for answering my question. Sure, yes. for sure man, for sure. And uh, Dion and, and uh, Tamika, they know how to contact me. Mm -hmm. uh, option B dot energy. You just go to contact us. If you are a company and work for a manufacturer and you're looking to install solar as your plant or want to look at some, you know, proposals and ways that we could we conduct an analysis for you. I have a team of dozens of EPCs and solar developers that would welcome the opportunity to see if solar is feasible for your location. Uh, and if you're looking to get into the business of solar, uh, certainly we have the workshops coming down the pipe that's going to connect the dots for you. And I have individual consultations that are very affordable. They can give you better than average understanding of how to get in solar. And, uh, and I can even give you, you know, you know, tests and, and kind of give you kind of one-on-one -on -one kind of how to get in the game. And as we've mentioned before, um, I've spent thousands of dollars uh, investing in understanding solar and the, all the moving parts of this industry. Uh, but for a few hundred dollars, you can get the level of knowledge. Well, not, I wouldn't say the level of knowledge of me because it takes years of it, but you can definitely skip the line, um, um, so to speak. So, yeah. Gotcha. Well, we appreciate you, and I hope everybody uh, got something out of it, understood everything. Like the question I do. Yeah, do you need to be? Do you need to be an engineer? We answer that. Nope, you don't need to be an engineer. Uh, that's what we were talking about with the workshop, and also just the, the amount of the skills that you need in order to get started. So that was one of the one of the bigger things that I wanted to make sure we highlighted as well too. Yeah, and so. Just to add uh, for the engineering side of it, if you're going to, there are things that do require a license for you to go through the interconnection study. There is an engineering that you need to go to be that stamp to where you can be compliant. Um, but if you're looking to own a company, you just outsource the design and you use some 
some engineer staff on it, or if you want to be an engineer in solar, there are some tests you need to take uh, that that are required. But to own a solar company, I require you know an engineering license because most of that is going to be outsourced, whether it be the electric electrician or depending on where you build. But uh, that's a way that we kind of talk about how you can get into the business without having to have all the stamps. Uh, but it's about alliances and relationships. Um, and, and so that's really that. So, yeah. So you must be talking about a PE license, right? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a in, in the E, I forget the name of the acronyms. I've been, it's so many acronyms. E-I-T but, um, or PE? No, it's the, uh, hold on a second. I'll tell you guys in a second. So most uh, of the, can you guys hear me and still see me? Yes. Okay. Most of the uh, licenses that you'll need, uh, the certifications and licensing. So there's different things. There's certifications, and this is through the, it's called the NABCEP. It's the National uh, American Board of Certified Energy Practitioners. It's a nationally recognized um independent, it's a volunteer certification program for photovoltaic systems. Um, and I can drop the link in the app here. Copy there. I'll throw it in the chat. You wanted to go into the comments or you wanted to go in private? It doesn't matter. I don't think you can post to the, the comment section. You have to do that. If you okay, I'll see you post it in private, I can go ahead and post it there. Yeah, I, I said it there. Um, there are a lot of, uh, let me send it over here. There you go. Uh, so there's, this is just one of many different things, but that you got to give you kind of a 10,000 foot view of what's required. So it's certification versus license. If you want to be a major player in it, you just partner with one of those guys that are engineer. And a lot of times they just use my stamp, put it in your website. That's the shortcut. I can't give you all the game. <laughs> he going to ask you 5,000 questions. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy. I'm trying to look as much dream. I'm trying to look as much. This is free, so I'm I'm here for the free free. <laughs> I'm going to get the game, too. I'm going to pay for it, but I'm also here for the free free. <laughs> I totally understand. But no. I appreciate your time. I know we went over way over your time that you was a lot of. We appreciate you, though. Thank you very, very I much. I've loved a lot. I love, I, love, <laughs> I, love, I love sharing. I love sharing. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, don't think you can take it and run right now. You're going to fall on your face. It's a lot involved. But again, workshops is going to connect the dots. Yeah. I just, I I just encourage. Yeah, just I just encourage a thirst for knowledge. Um, that's because that's what I did. And I'm thankful that I had the wherewithal to say when those, when those engineers say, yeah, you know, we need, I said, well, hold up, wait a minute, give me about a month because they were willing to pay me a $8,000 a month retainer and 8% of the margin and all this stuff. I said, that's fine. That's great. But I want to have a real meaningful impact and I want to be successful. So let me just spend a month before we, sign these agreements to understand what I'm getting into. And I tell you, I was like Chinese. And, you know, it's like with anything, you stay at it, you stay at it, you stay at it. Then one day you have that aha moment. Whoa, I get it. I get it now. I get it from A to Z to now I can do it half sleep and drunk. <laughs> Is after you party at at, at, at Houston? Is after you party? No, 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 no. Let me be professional here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I think that uh, it's it's a great industry. It's it's definitely an industry. I would say number one industry that anybody that 
you know, would want to be in certainly technology and, and, the, and the industry you, you ladies are in. And, you know, that's just, that's where it is. It's like, I told friend, a buddy of mine, and I'll let you guys go and I'll kind of be done for the day. Um, they were selling women's shoes 15 years ago, right? Like the guy was making a hundred thousand a year. He thought everything was sweet. He had his book of business. And I told him, man, you need to kind of reinvent yourself because eventually, you know, this brick and mortar situation is going to go away uh, because those $1,500 shoes you're selling to your clients, eventually you're going to start getting those shoes for $500 online. He didn't wise up. He didn't change. He didn't evolve. He didn't look at the landscape and the trajectory of where we're going and didn't adapt we live in a climate in a world right now where you you have to adapt or you'll drown. And I've tried to help him so many different ways, and now he's drowning. And he's been drowning in the last 10 years. You know, and 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 it's you have to evolve, you have to be aware of the landscape, where things are going, what's viable, what makes sense, and where the market is going, so you can be a big player in the market. So I'll kind of leave with that. Thank you. Yep. You got anything you want to add? Thank you. <laughs> you <more than> welcome. <laughs> I, 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 was, I was in the chat. I was answering because somebody asked, how can we find you? And I was put I was putting his website in the chat. So I'm I'm here, I'm listening, but I'm multitasking. But thank you. Um, I yeah, know absolutely. We're talking about so anybody, anybody that wants one on one kind of understanding and knowledge, um, I'm willing to do the one on ones. That's not a problem. It's not going to be painful. It's not going to be expensive. I mean, you can go and try and connect the dots online, or you could come direct to me. I'm a consultant. That's how I make my money. Um, you know, I have clients that pay me ten thousand dollars a month retainer to, you know, that are, you know, that have generated, you know, millions of dollars, but they need understanding, better understanding of how to penetrate into the CNI. Individual one-on-ones, a few hundred dollars is nothing uh, for me to give you game or at least show you where to go. Um, and then, you know, it could be retained or you could say one-off, just give me more one-on-one -on -one understanding of it and I'll give you more game than you could, that you can get in three months online. Thank you. All right. Got you. All right, B. Anything else you want to add before we end? I don't want. I don't want to add anything. I think Anthony did a great job of covering all aspects of solar. Um, I'm glad we were finally able to connect and have him on the show, and so he can give everybody the bird eye view. Um, this is a brother that's in the game. Um, he didn't preach about the quick way, the easy route to get it. He said, if you try to do that way, you're going to fall on your face. It's about putting in that work. And so I'm glad that he gave an honest opinion um, um, about what's going on and where people need to be and where the industry is going. So I definitely appreciate you for um, coming out and gracing us with your presence this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Yeah. So anytime... Uh, sorry about the technical difficulties earlier. I it's know okay. TNT needs to cut me a check because I don't operate like this. But normally it's pretty smooth. But again, thank you for your time. Everybody have a great uh, Saturday. And if you believe in Easter, hey, happy Easter and all that. And, you know, keep uh, that thirst for knowledge. All right. We appreciate you. Have a good one. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Damn, what's up with $25 hour game? I need that $25 hour game. Uh, I got the million dollar game right now. It's funny that you say that, right? So there, you know, it was on JT Pocket Watching, right? And the argument was that Anton Daniels make $118,000 when he was working a line inside of, uh, working on the line in, in a plant factory. So, I worked at General Motors when I was in, when I lived in Atlanta. I worked at General Motors and I worked at Ford. And I put 
on the line, I will put on carburetors. I will put on uh, belts. I may sand down a car. I may uh, seal the the car so it, it, as 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 you you know as you lay down the tarp, it doesn't get water inside the car because let's go through a water test. Um, I would paint a car. I would um, I would do multiple things, right? So the cap is is like. Uh, they were like, you can't get paid $25 an hour work at the plant. Well, how it worked for the summer was you worked um, at the plant the first time, like for the summer, and you might have came in at $20 an hour, right? And then every time you come back, you would make maybe a dollar to a dollar fifty more. Well, eventually I went back and I and I and I went back and I was in at twenty five dollars an hour. And this is back in ninety nine, two thousand. Right. So they'll call you back in like you'll work six weeks and then you'll be off for like a week or two. And then they call you back and you'll work another nine weeks and then you'll be off or whatnot. But you got paid every single week where well, the person is arguing with me online saying that you. There's no way you could have got paid twenty five dollars an hour, and I'm like, this is back in two thousand when I got paid this. So you answer your question: Where's the twenty five dollars twenty five dollars an hour job? Is go work at General Motors on the plant at, at the plant, or go work at Ford? Here's the difference between General Motors and Ford. From when I was working there, General Motors has la massive break time. So if you if if the line time is what we we may do something like a 12-5, meaning you're going to work 12 hours and 30 minutes, right? You may get a break, but everybody gets a break together. Ford, they line never stops, ever. Like, they line don't stop for no, for no breaks. So as a trainer, you're going to need to know every single position. So if you got 15 people on your line, you're going to need to know every single position. So I at Ford, I put on... Uh, I worked with fiberglass. So at night, if I if I didn't have on the right stuff or whatnot, that fire when you take a shower, it'd be in there cutting you up. Fiberglass will cut you up because you can't see it. Fiberglass will cut you. Be in there taking a shower and just be bleeding because you cut up from fiberglass. So you got to do the right thing to protect yourself. Um, I put on windshield wipers. I've installed radios. I've installed brakes. Right? It's you, you know, especially when you're working on the line. Right? You may have to hop over to a position because somebody had to go run to the bathroom, and the trainer might be over there. So you got two things that you that you're doing. Right? So again, it, can you make money working at General Motors and Ford and working on the plant and being on the line? Absolutely. Um, but again, that's city dependent and production depending on what they're producing. Um, but that's not 200k. That's that's not 200k. But it get, but here's what here's what your benefits get with Ford. You get a company that's been around. You can move around in the company, and you can also use the the credits to go get you a, a college degree. And on top of that, you get a discount on your car. So it may not be the 200K, but you got benefits that come along with it. So again, it's always person dependent on how you see yourself and what you want to do. I got time. I got time. What else you got? I got I'm time. Just, I'm just, every, everybody keeps talking about, you keep talking about the 240K. And again, I, I, say I agree. I, 200K, I agree. But again, even when I talk about it, it's more of cap and all that. It's so now, cap. but so I, had, I had this conversation earlier on my on the first show, and the conversation was this: um, Why not make it more relatable? Why not say no, eighty k? No, no, it wasn't even about more relatable. It was it was like why are we why are we aiming so high? And that's the uh, for me, I don't know how we get that confused as to why is that aiming so high, and it's not. It's not. It's to me. It's not high. It's, it's just, not high. It's 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 just a matter of where do you see yourself? Like how do how are we really picturing ourselves? Do we really think that we can keep 
up the level of, of what we're of where we're at in terms of we're just surviving in order to create generational wealth like we again we got a dangerous relationship with money and we have a a, a, a dangerous relationship with each other and people who choose to thrive right we have a dangerous relationship with that like if if somebody goes out there and say you know what i'm going out here and i'm gonna make me fifty thousand dollars a month people are like you can't do that and why would you need to do that right why would you because i right. want to do that right, right? yeah again I've talked to a lot of fintech startup CEOs and all that. They tell me millions of dollars are possible. You just need to work through it and find something to go. So I know it's possible. I know it's feasible. But it's but not again, the fact that it's, it's, see, I look at it like this. It's not the fact that it's not possible. It's the fact of why are you not doing it? That's my thing. Yeah. Why, again, why not do it? Why not give it a shot? Why not give it a try? What's what's holding what's holding back? Right? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Somebody talking about four hundred to six hundred thousand, and then fifteen million, uh, and right, we talking millions. Now, I I'm talking just two hundred thousand. But you, you saw the chart. You you brought the chart out. Most African Americans are between that fifty six. You brought the chart out. I did. But that, but again, and the right. people in that environment are surrounded by the same people with the 50 and 60 mindset. So you're trying but to pull the chart out for a reason. The chart, the chart I brought out is this either you're gonna be in that or you're not, right? If you could be in the fifty thousand dollar range or the thirty thousand dollar range or the twenty five thousand dollar range, or you can move on and be in another range, and you got to want it for yourself or, or how you see it for yourself and if you don't want it for yourself at least encourage somebody else to go do it but don't tear them down because they want to go do it that's my that's what my problem is that don't tear people down because they want to do something that's just that's just mean it's just not for you but don't tear them down and 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 we got a we got a bad habit of doing this we're tear we're tell we're tear people down we say oh y'all you can't do that but maybe you can like we'll tear people down and then build them back up just enough like you know like you know like, you know we'll tear them down and then we'll be like well let me pick you up and then dust you off and then send you on your way but you already tore them down we, are, we tear each other down so much like it's ridiculous like i i'm like man like where is this coming from that you don't even want to see somebody else be happy if if you're not happy then you be in your bubble and be not happy again you like, know it's um I, I apologize for stepping on you it, it's it's first of all it's sad because it is like it is not it is like it is like spreading your imposter syndrome to people it's an energy that you that permeates and uh, uh, what and you have the you have the option to have any opinion you have but it's it's one of those things where you tell people and i say it all the time you can be do have anything you want in the world you can have it but it's a price tag to pay for it and sometimes that price tag is not money it's your time it's your energy it's your effort. It's the people that are around you. It may be you by yourself powering that. So people have to be very, very, very careful about the energy that they bring into the room about a certain situation. In the chat, I can tell when people haven't been in our space by the energy that they exude, about the comments that they make. And it's sad when you come to a space and you, your your heels are dug so in the ground that you can't even see a different point of view to help you out of your situation to do better, to be better, to have better. Because everybody does it a little bit differently. But that's why we come to spaces like this so that we can get a different perspective on how we can tackle an issue that we may be having, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, financial, anything. This is the whole part of the community. But I definitely don't want people in this space with that 
that I, I you can't have it mentality. That's that 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 sucks. It's it's whack. It, it's a whack energy to bring to the space. You cannot grow, and it's 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 like a thorn. Like oh, I can. It's like the little what we call it, good Kermit, bad Kermit. It's like having a bad Kermit on your on your shoulder all day, like bad Kermit. Like I got this. Like I'm trying to get in here. I'm trying to win. But sometimes you need some some people need that energy for some people to tell them no, they can't do it in order to go. If that's what you need to propel you, then all means I don't want to hear it. I I don't have time for it. It doesn't boost me in any way. It doesn't help me in any way for you to tell me no. I know some people who thrive off you telling them no. They want it. They need it. They have to have it. Tell them they can't have something. They're going to do exactly the opposite. So the energy can definitely work both ways. But to have that energy all day, every day, sit and talk about what you can't do all day, it's, 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 it's it's not good. It's terrible. I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it when Tam be talking about it because she think it's funny. Like, it is it's draining. Well, it's, I, don't, I don't be thinking it's funny. I, I be thinking it's um, ironic. Let me say it that way. Because when someone says that that can't be done, I'm like, man, what does that really mean if you already did it? <laughs> or, or doing it. Right. What does that mean? Or, or like, no, working that towards done. getting it. Right. Um, and you guys bring guests, great guests, to basically show that it really exists. Like Anthony that just left. That was something else. So, again, you bring guests. You've talked about your experiences, but people still won't believe and so, I'm okay with them not believing. That's that's the part you got to understand. I'm okay with people not believing. That is not going to stop me from doing, right? right. That's not going to stop me from getting up and doing. And it's most definitely not going to stop me from going to make as much money as I possibly can. That's that's not going to happen. Now, now what happens is, and, and this is what happens often, is the 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 backlash of you doing it um and, and this is another thing that comes up is well you're lucky you're lucky for you yeah you're lucky because you you're, you're cuz you did that right it is it, and what when i hear you're lucky or when i hear you're a unicorn this is what i hear screw everything that you ever did and all the crying and all the studying and everything that you it ever that you did one. like you're discounting the fact that I put in time and effort. You're discounting the fact that I actually met someone that actually cared enough to, to help me get through a situation or promote me at work. You're, 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 you're discounting my abilities as a human being. Screw that I'm a, a, a woman. You're discounting my abilities as a human being. And then you're taking away that power from me to make you look good because you're saying something that people who are miserable or people who don't have the or don't want to put the time in it, it makes them feel good. Right. So that's what it says to me. And then I had to ask the question of, well, what are your skill sets and why are you not thriving in your skill sets or doing what you need to do. And so I, it makes me have questions about a person, right? Because people will get online all day and shoot me emails. I just don't even tell D about some of the emails that I get. They'll be like, but you know, you're talking 200,000 uh, for, for a woman or a man to get used this for a woman to get. And I made 80,000 and you're sending the wrong presidents for people to go out to make the 200. And I'm like, but why are you afraid to go past 80? Like who gets in a job and be like, don't give me no raise. You hold that. Don't do that. Afraid don't, of the responsibility. I don't want it. I don't afraid want of the responsibility that come with more money. 
So like who does that? I don't know nobody that does that. Like, don't give me a raise. I'm cool with 80, even though I've been working for you for four or five years. How dare you give me more money? You keep that. Because that because I'm not, I'm 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 no. I don't know nobody. Yeah, I don't know nobody that does keep, that. Keep, so I, keep I, your I, raise. I just have keep questions. <laughs> But again, I I, I agree with the not high enough. I agree with the two hundred and all that because right now it's getting tough out here. Money's and, and needed. Two hundred really is looking kind of slim. It's looking, looking kind of suspect right now. Yeah, two hundred kind of slim, slim depending on where you at. You live, but again, it's but again based on the chart, we need to go into more. Again, two hundred, three hundred. This is where we need to be. So that now you can look into again solar energy projects. So look into this, own your own, and go into more money. Right. Again, this this is where it's going. And yes, I joke around in the chats because again, <laughs> most of the people I talk to, they tell me eighty k to hundred k is a dream. So, and I'm tired of arguing. Like you need 180, 200, 240 just to live properly and then look at other projects and do stuff but again it's not what anybody wants to hear they want to hear hey how can i get the 80 100k chill in the house and do what i need to do right. and i'm not i'm tired of arguing with things that. where people around them they're making more money than the people around them and so they think that it's and based on where people live you know, we're of the mindset, it don't matter where I need live, I need this much money, period, point blank. I could live in a cardboard box on Q Street. Don't count my money. However, I think people have a, which is crazy, they have a negative connotation of, of money, what the money is. You have to look at money as an opportunity, as a vehicle, as a resource to, to, to not have things that are the fancy flamboyant things, but think of the money for the provision of what it does for your children, for your family, for your mother, for your father, for your, if you don't have your nieces, your nephews, for your community. Like people have a really warped sense of relationship with money and what that means. And some people think, that what they have is just enough and it is, it might be just enough but if you don't have that money today can you can it in if, if it stops the train stops how are you going to live in the future and some people don't care about the future like tam was saying earlier in the other show when it comes to the the nursing homes and you know having a comfortable life that's what's really about. And when you get in different rooms and different spaces, the conversation about money and what the provision is about the money, 80,000, you get laughed out the room. <laughs> like, what... literally, like, it's just like, <laughs> oh, tink, tink. Like, what are you talking? Tink, what's, what's going on? What, what, what you doing? Want? What's going on? Why? Why, 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 why do you see that? Like my, my high schooler is getting that because my company offered them an a, a internship. Like our relationship with money and right. what money provides needs to change. An extra 500 in the, in your, in your pockets. Okay. You don't need, they don't right. need more, but that's the problem. We, we don't, we, we need to, again, have more, interest in terms of growing the money base itself again investments we gotta make it income though. and no, yeah we gotta problem. make it but the skill the problem again you talk of skills is the hard part of achieving those skills that's the problem it's oh the, I, I agree it's the hard part of achieving those you, skills you, but, you did devops everybody let me, it's, okay it's, let me ask you this which one is harder let me ask you this Achieving the skills of not being able to go to the doctor because you got a you 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 got gangrene set up in your foot. Which one is harder? Okay, you yeah, big, you're, you're probably you go into the ex, extreme. But 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 it, but what you're missing is we are extreme. Like we we're we're at we're at the brink of 
when hit when 2053 hits we're gonna be zero we're already negative hold on now 3.5 million of us already got a negative net worth 7.8 million only has 10,000 as their net worth and i did the calculation there's 41.9 million american black americans in the united states out of those combining those two that means 30 percent of us are are just not making it. We like like we just cutting off. That's thirty percent of us that's not making it, right? Then we still have the rest of us that are in this middle space of I can't get past fifty. I can't get past eighty, right? And then we got some that are at a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand. And we saw on that graph, and it's not to say the graph is the truest of be of be all, right? That two hundred was it ain't popping. It ain't that ain't nothing happening, right? We saw that, right? But we know there are people out there that make that are millionaires. We know black people that that are out there that are millionaires. So we we're not saying that graph is a true uh, 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 resource of what forty one point nine million people are, but it's a good it's a good indication. Yeah of what we encounter and what we see. I always ask this question. I mean, me and Dee had this conversation earlier. Earlier, People are like, well, women have all these kids and they on section eight and they doing this. And my question is, where are you going to meet women who have all these kids in our section eight? I just want to know where do you go? And where, where, do you, where are you dating? Like now we have a question, where are you finding me? Where are you going where these, women, where these women have where they're on section eight and they have multiple baby daddies? Like where, where are you looking? Like, like where are you going? Like I just want to know because it because it, it it seems if you look at everything that we've seen, that it is all the black women have multiple kids and they have multiple baby daddies and they have and they all on section eight right and and for me this is where it comes this is where the problem comes in at because people are like stop lying you don't make that kind of money well i put my job offers out there then people come back this is what they say this is my favorite one just because they offers you the job don't mean that's the job that you took you like oh, okay. okay now i didn't take the job now now it's getting to the point now where you literally have to pull out check stubs and be like okay for this week this is what i got paid for this week right for these two weeks this is why i got paid like literally and then that comes with a with a with another rabbit hole that could be a fake check you were like okay well I, I that's why you know i'm like f them and feed them fish like I can I can see, and again, you said we have these conversations all the time. <laughs> I can see if we were charging a trillion dollars on courses, even our one on ones just went up, and their donations to the nonprofit. If you want the information, it's here for you. If you don't want the information, that's fine. If you just like listening to us talk, that's okay as well. But I learned a long time ago, I'm going to prove myself to no one. I owe no one nothing. I am here by the grace of God every Saturday <laughs> for 38 episodes. The other show, that, like, hey. Is, Sometimes is, something is never going to be good enough for some people. Those are not my people. But if you don't want it, go about your merry way. If you need it and you want it, it's here for you. I'm not going to give you anything that you're gonna have to go verify and fact check and all that because I'm not I'm not charging you anything. I'm basically here on my time giving away stuff. And with everything, even when I give a person a referral about another service, I give the disclaimer. Do your own due diligence. You are welcome to do your own due diligence on the information that is being provided. Do your own due diligence. Do your own work. 
do the work. It's just that easy. If you don't want to do the work and you want some other information that you don't know about, come, partake, sit, drink, engage. It's here. But I think it is so counterproductive because some people on the internet, they just, they talking out the side of their head. Just let's do it. Just a spade a spade. However, it takes too much energy to get up here to be fraud. It takes too much time to get people to come on the show. It costs us money to be on YouTube. It costs us money. I could be out here brunching. Sipping the champagne of life, soaking up the vitamin be, like, like the guy that you can be the whole, you can be the whole on the boat. I can go be on a boat. <laughs> I can be on the boat. I can be drinking fruit drinks right now. I can be go partake. But here, I'm in my office with this bright ass light in my face, dedicating time and energy. And working socially to be here for everybody. It's just a lot of energy wasted. And in the true nature of a person that I know that I hold dearly in my heart that goes by the name of Matt, we're too broke to argue. We're too broke to argue. <laughs> we need to get Matt on the show. We need to get Matt on the show. We're going to have Matt on Binary Hustlers. Sidebar. I put a, um, I don't know what happened to our last channel. It has 33 subscribers. However, I posted a link in the chat, in, in, in the chat for um, the new, uh, our new channel. So go ahead and subscribe. I, oh, did somebody say flewed out? You could be go going to get flewed out. I could be on the road with the top down somewhere. Like it can be so many live things that happen, but instead, I love spending my Saturdays here with you all, drinking water and just talking and, you know, shooting shit. Getting the message up. Hold on. Hold on, deep. But, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that <laughs> we can't play that on on yes, nonprofit shows. Yes, we can. We cannot play it. Yes, we can. You have to say that for binary. Hustle. No, I can play this. No, you can't play this. Yes, I can. Okay. What can I? Okay. Hold on. I'll put let it up on screen. Hold on. Let me turn it up. Let me back it up. Hold on. Hold on. Let me back it up. I would like to be someone's hoe on a boat. So if you have a boat, a maritime vehicle, sail down resistance 4045, Kitty 60 to 70. And you are in need of a hoe to be on your boat. I got you. I got you, babe. Woo. I would like to be someone's hoe on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that takes me out every time. How did you get here? I don't need to be here. I can go on my boat. <laughs> Our responsibility as humans on this planet is to give back. Our community starts with people that we can virtually put our hands in. And if you've noticed, it is not, we don't have 5,000 people here on the show. People that are here want what we have to offer. And we appreciate you all for coming out. And even if you just have time to show up to listen to this while you are working out your schedule to figure out what your, your path is for yourself, that is definitely okay. Are we saying that you're going to make this 200000 tomorrow? Absolutely not. We're not here to... to so, you know, scams, no schemes, no tricks, anything like that. We just want to simply let you know that you have options. And those options are going to take a little bit of time and effort. They're going to take a little bit of brain power. You're not going to get it at first. 
you got you're not gonna know where you want to go at first but you know what it's okay it's okay to not know it's okay to need some help it's okay to talk to somebody it's okay to say i do not know it's okay to say i got this but you know what i want to get this with like-minded people that's what we're here for period point blank in the discussion all that other stuff is noise it's distractions and it's confusion we do broke to argue that's it hashtag vladimir i see you out there d vladimir get your, get your shout out there and let me see what you say uh i haven't been back on the swimming pool idea and Queen Lee said, folk that bring that doubt, they need to change the network. That's what I said. I like I'm not, I'm not for everybody. I'm not for everybody. And I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. I want you to be the best you can be, whatever it is that you decide to do. If you okay with being that, you know, whatever that is, be be the best at it though. All right. Don't but don't knock nobody else because they doing something different. Don't do that. That's just giving off hater energy. That's not okay. But again, everybody diff needs different motivators. And uh, <laughs> give <me the> <laughs> uh somebody said that uh, the folks that bring the doubt, they need to change their network. Actually, they're exactly where they need to be in their doubt network. Let them stay in the doubt network. And one day when they want to get it, they'll get it. Period. Oh, oh this I is what know, I want to I'm do. I'm a sports critic. There's things that I need to be doing to be at another level where I need to be. But you know what? I'm not about to be kicking myself in the throat about it. Like, I know what it is. I know where, how I need to go get it. I know what time that I need to go do it. But you know what? You're only, you're only as good as what you physically are where you mentally are at that time and think that changes sometimes you just want to go take a nap you want to meet your homegirl on the couch for bonnet love and facetime your friends or with your bonnet on it's okay sometimes you going you you with it you in it you listening to the podcast you're studying you in it yeah and um i also want to say this too Cause I think um, I think a lot of people get get it twisted that I'm that that we're saying or I'm saying that um, not that the fact that you're gonna get it tomorrow that that um, that once you get there that's it right I don't I don't I don't want you to feel that I want you to understand that it's more to it on on the guide and and on the meetups i talk about this how people are gatekeepers keepers and gatekeepers come in all colors all ages all ranges right it is what it is hey q4 i i i a bun a bunny at home is a bunny at home we're not talking about bunny in public right but um but i also want to add um we're not getting any younger and I am. you may look younger i'm getting younger okay you, you you're gonna be on the boat <laughs> okay All right so but uh, but if if we're not um on the um on the on the right on the right path for for success and having I, I don't want to call it just an abundance mindset it's just it's just having everything abundance positivity you could do it it's possible you see others doing it it could be done right and 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 just do it like and, and I just don't I don't know I I I worry um and I don't worry I worried I, I worry that that I, I I worry that we, we get left behind. That's what I worry about. 
We're already left behind, but I mean, when I say left behind, I mean dusted. <laughs> no, we are left. Like we, <laughs> we are we left. left. I mean dusted. Yeah, and so I don't, I don't want that to happen, and I'm gonna do what I can to make sure that doesn't happen. But it also takes work from you as well too, um, to make sure that you're in the game, that you're in the room, that you are talking, that you are meeting people, that you are greeting people. Right. And so um that was it. That was really more my mindset today. My mindset w- was about um how how what what does this look like for us? What does this what does this look like long term? I I'm I I have my own ideas of, of of where of other things and other places that we have I've highlighted them, but I haven't drilled into them. Um, but um, you know, just want want us to win, and I I don't I don't understand why that is a problem, right? We can argue all day long, right, about stuff. I mean, we're we. We're knocking each other off one by one, and then still put up a GoFundMe to get to get somebody buried. Yeah. Right? We still not even getting life insurance. We still not even. Um, I oh, I, let me look. Pull up my thing. Let me let me find my notes because this was self sabotage. I mean, we say. I mean, this just like littering in your own neighborhood. Like, but just go outside and throw all your trash out in, in the front of your house. <laughs> like, why would you do that? So sabotage. Let me see. I I had pulled up a while ago what our what four one ks were like by race. By race and age, average four one k by race and age. Um. And uh, let me see. I think this may be from 2020 that they're pulling this from. Let me look. It was it was it was something ridiculous. It was like I don't know. Let's see. Where's that map at? Oh, so you can see numbers. I like for you to see numbers. That's what I like. Don't be giving us no uh, numbers from that fake website you got going over there. Who me? Oh, my fake my fake website. Yeah, that you work diligently through the night getting up to, so to create <laughs> untruths, fairy tales, and fallacies. Let me stop. I'm ready to go <laughs> so I can go get me something to eat. Where you going? I am going to um, barbecue. We'll discuss offline. I can't find it no more. It is in my notes. It's all good, though. It was ridiculous. It was all good, though. Oh, I think everybody got the idea though. But it's all good. Yeah, so it was like this. Sure this leave up. It was like this, like uh non white households, households, and this that's from twenty ten, so you know this probably grew over time. But anyway, you can see thirty thousand, twenty five thousand, ten thousand, seventy five thousand, or twenty thousand. This is old. But it's it's another report I hear that where this this line is like way down here and this one is way over here. You're like, oh, look, Lord. <laughs> and and the reason why you don't have any money to put into your four hundred one k where you can max it out because you don't make no money to max it out, <laughs> like, right? You don't make enough money to max it out. And it's not, and everybody isn't a living above their means. It's just the, the means are high. 
The means are high. That's all. It is what it is. <sighs> okay. Well, I'm done. What you say out here? What's going on, intentional millionaire? Hey, intentional millionaire, are you um are you going are you ready for for the fun lunch? I had to extend my room. It cost me five hundred dollars to extend my room. I thought I had booked it up through Saturday. I mean, I did book it through Saturday, but not Saturday night. So it cost me five hundred dollars. I was mad. Five hundred extra more dollars, I should say. Just start my 401k, but we got to wait a year for the max, sadly. Yeah, that's the hard part. Going to book one soon. Yeah, book a session. I'm glad you needed that discussion. I'm glad to take, got some good takeaway from it. All right, people, y'all be safe. Do everything that you can to not be uh, in the broke mindset or the average or basic mindset, whatever that looks like for you or whatever you think that is and also strive to be better than what you were the day before give yourself some grace give yourself some time um and share your knowledge with others until then people we'll catch you next week